we go, man. I'm about to click this button. So three, All right. two, one, let's go. What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason. We're back, baby. It's been a minute. Uh, uh, I know shit's rough out there. <laughs> I feel a little bit like uh, Zelensky at the front lines coming out here like, all right, dogs, I know we have gained one inch in six months, but I just need y'all to keep fighting. And, um, you know, <laughs> all jokes aside, man, we're going to keep fighting here because I uh, really believe in, in this mission of uh, providing high quality documentation. We're going to share some of that tonight. An absolutely amazing demo uh, from Hendy. Uh, from Glass Vegas. I'd like to take a second to introduce my co-host for the night, my boy, Kai Jewel. I'm back. What's up, everybody? Yeah, we doing this. I know a lot of y'all out there have some of his art on your walls or hanging in your studios, man. The originator of the torch tie-dye. And uh, it's just great to have you here, man. And uh, I hope life's it's good. It's good to be back. Yeah, life is great, man. Nice and chill. Got the kiddos. All right. Taking care of them. Busy, I love it. busy. Hell yeah. Family's real important. Um, yeah, life's life's good over here. For those of y'all who don't know, um, I've actually been working in a laboratory the past few months. Your boy knows so much about working with short path condensers and all kinds of crazy shit. And then they've also got me cooking uh, edible gummies which I really love. It's actually fucking really sweet. So, um, and you know, it, that kind of leads me to something I wanted to talk about before we jump into this demo. Um, I know it's tough time and the industry is, is really getting a little stark. Um, you know, it's not dead or anything, but I know for most of, most of us have seen a pretty, uh, distinct, uh, drop off right now. And, um, you know, I didn't get that job because things were like tanking. This was just a, I really needed to get back into a house, honestly. But, um, you know, what I wanted to say was that this has been a really amazing experience. I've made some really cool friends. Um, I just want to say dogs, if, if, you know, don't be scared. I know we're like, we've been feral for years, you know, out here doing our thing and it's a, it's a hard uh, thing to do, but man, I tell you, life is uh, wide open you know and new things lead to new opportunities and new doors that you might not have even seen coming so i mean just hold tight out there Thank guys you. and you know don't be afraid to to get that side hustle or side job going and you know uh so we can keep doing what we love and um that's the other big part of this uh, you know a buddy in torch talk posted you know he was like well i know mike's real busy with the new job and so we're not getting this content or whatever and I just wanted to clarify that I took this job um, and I'm working towards getting back in a house and into a, just a more stable place. And the thing that I was actually willing to sacrifice in that was the glass blowing, uh, not the documentation work that I've has just been a highlight of my life. Um, I remain deeply committed to what we're doing here and capturing something really special and just a really unique moment in glass history. My heart still beats for that. It's actually why I've kind of reoriented my life in a lot of ways um, <clears throat> to be to be sure I get to keep doing this, you know, regardless of the way the winds blow on the glass thing. And I'll also admit that I felt completely backed into a corner with the Millie thing. Like it's, it, it, it wasn't actually fun for me anymore because I was doing like the same three pulls, you know, every other month. And I felt like I had to, to like pay my bills. I don't know. It I can't speak. Job. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say like, everything has been awesome. I really like blowing glass for fun now. It's so great. I still rent my studio space. It's not like I'm giving it up. It's just, um, yeah, I, my, the message here, homies, is like, don't be afraid to try something new if, if you know, like, you got to make that calculation about how much the stress is worth of, you know, being Aerosmith status. You know, you're living on the edge or whatever <laughs> kind of thing. Um, yeah, homies, check out the new webcam. This motherfucker is AI tracking. It's fucking sweet as shit. 
Um, yo, check out, this is my, uh, oh, sorry, wrong hand, man. Stage left, or whatever. That's my uh, Highland Flames tattoo. Fucking, <laughs> we all got thistles out there. We'll talk about that another night, but I just want to say that trip to Scotland was the best thing. Like, th this is like your bucket list glass trip, dogs. Um, really incredible. They got another one this next year, right? What's that, buddy? They got another one this next year, right, in the summer? They do. It's coming. I don't know if they've made an official, like, announcement on dates and all that, um, but it's coming. And, uh, yeah, anyways, not to get too far away from what we're here to do tonight. Um, guys, Glass yeah. Vegas is coming up. Man, we've been with this event from year one. Uh, I'm so excited. They have a sick lineup of demos. Like, the Millie Meetup party's happening. The Boro Derby. And everything is happening all over again. And, uh, man, this is just going to be a blast, whether you're there to vend. If you're there to vend, they're now in the same space as TPE, the Total Product Expo, which should really bring in a, a ton of new buyers. It's a good setup. Guys, the opening night party band is the motherfucking Whalers, with one actual dude who is in the Bob Marley and the Whalers. It's crazy. Oh, cool. <laughs> No, but sincerely, the Whalers are the shit. Like, this is, gosh, like, last year was Jacob Knoll. I just saw an announcement that he's about to play his very first show uh, with, the like, the remaining members of Sublime. And if and I will actually be doing, like, an onstage special with that music, so you guys will get a taste. If you're my age here at uh, 43 now, you kind of came up with Sublime, and uh, that was such a special performance, and I'm excited to share that. Um, yeah, you know, without further ado, I don't want to uh, make this a long, too long-winded thing. Let's get into this uh, incredible demo from Hendy. He might be popping in. He might pop in the live chat, but he's a family man, and uh, it was going to be kind of 50-50 on that so we'll see i hope he pops in and gets us by surprise but either way i'm so excited to share this i'm so excited to return to glass vegas it's gonna be great and homies we do just take a minute to acknowledge some companies uh and homies like you have been pitching in um they that's why we're still doing this in 2023 um it Oh shit, Hendy is motherfucking here, you guys. I fucking told y'all. My man. Hey. Hey, buddy. Shoot, you know, I'm gonna just restart this thing and pop back in so we can introduce you properly. We had just started the demo. Uh, but homies, Hendy is in the house. Um, let me close my thing here. How do I make this go away? We'll pin you guys up, and that'll make my... Uh, Wow, this is high tech. Yeah, I gotta like figure out. I'm gonna turn my camera off just for now. Well, all right, whatever. Anyways, Hendy's here. We will unpin you. <laughs> Homie, how are you? Doing well. How about you? Everything is great. Um, <laughs> I was laughing. I was hoping you were gonna pop up with like the the facial hair from like Champs and shit. No. Oh. What was that rocking then? I, I've been through a couple of different things lately. Okay, yeah, you had kind of the cop cop goatee thing going on and shit. It was pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the mustache. I was rocking. rocking yeah, the, the stash. stash. While, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good shit. Anyways, man, hey homie, it is an honor to have you. Uh, I I think your work is just ten out of ten. You are like a maestro of sculpting in this business. Um. That demo was ridiculous, uh, and some of your more recent work, like the stuff you were doing with Hick Dog out of Champs, just like, blew blew my mind. So I thank you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that. Of course, just totally honored to have you. Uh, what have you been up to lately? Oh, just surviving, I guess. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, just, we... I got a I got a wife and and two small children, so uh, that's definitely uh, it's different, I guess these days. You know, it's like my uh, I don't have all the time that I used to 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 get stuff done and 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 do business and everything like that. So I'm tired. <laughs> okay, 
I understand, man. I like I was telling you, my daughter just turned twenty one. So this was kind of uh, I'm in a whole different life now, back to the you know the, the sweet freedom, yeah, as uh, it, Michael yeah. McDonald puts it or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, I totally get it. And I was just telling the homies before you popped in, I was like, it's a fifty fifty. He's a family man, and that always takes priority. So, yeah, it it does, you know. And and I try my best to. Um... I mean, there's times when like getting ready for a show and or, you know, the trade shows and things like that. You just kind of, you know, you got to get stuff done. And, and luckily, I got an awesome wife that will hold down the fort at home. You know, if I need to be at work for 16 hours a day for, uh, you know, a couple of weeks or so, you know, she'll 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 hold it down. But, uh, you know, if for anybody who has small kids, like they're a fucking they're a handful. So. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, of course, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It's one thing after another, be a daycare, preschool, you know, trying. And I did that with a nine to five job with, with full custody. So I really uh, I know that that rat race yeah, or I don't know what the right word is, but it's a thing. <laughs> you know, you got to be like ready to do that or ready to step up. So. Right. Yeah. And like I said, uh, I got an awesome wife, so it does really makes it easier. Uh, but, you know, I think I'm uh I was just talking with some friends the other day. I think I'm in my 17th year of bowling glass. Uh, I just turned 37. And so I started when I was 20. Oh, wow. And yeah. And, and to, to basically start then and like, you know, all the time and the, the, the effort and dedication I could put into it versus like now everything's just so different. You know, it's like there's 17 years under the belt. So there's a lot of just, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is like, uh, not like autopilot, but like things that you used to have to really worry about or focus on or try to, you know, perfect, you know, that, that happened a while ago. So now it's like, you know, I just am kind of going through like, Oh, I just do this and do that. So like you're saying with the pieces with hick dog for, uh, you know, we worked on two together, one for champs, Mark. one, uh, yeah, one for the GFO. Uh, it was fun to get back into those projects just because, um, each time I kind of, I'm typically a guy that's like, uh, I'd say like, I want to say like a, it'd be a bad word, but like the blue collar glass blower, blue collar collector guy, you know, like my pieces are, uh, well made, uh, but not huge. And like, you know, it's just, you, you get a good bang for your buck, I guess would be the best way I could say it. Like, you know, are they cheap? No, but they're not, uh, on the top, top tier. And they're not also on the bottom tier. And so I, I do a lot of that work, you know, uh, mostly because, you know, sometimes, you know, putting, uh, you know, between uh, Hick Dog and I, we, we put 300 hours into that Mario Kart, you know, so 150 a piece. And that was within, uh, I think we had worked, we worked 11 days straight and then we took one day off to get to the DFO. Uh, we flew in and then worked another 12 hour day at the DFO. So we, we did like 12 days on that piece just nonstop oh, wow. and it's Incredible. like uh yeah that shit like you know it, like i said you know after a while wife's like okay dude like enough <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta come so home sometimes yeah sometimes i kind of get into more of the jam of like you know getting those uh you know bread and butter pieces or the pieces that i can get done in 10 hours or you know two days so maybe it's a 20 hour piece or something and uh the fun part about that is, is like, because I've gone to a point to where, um, I just enjoy sculpting. I kind of just, if I don't have orders, like I'm working on orders and things right now, but if I don't have orders, I just kind of freestyle it and I'll be like driving to work and be like, today I'm going to make uh, I don't know if I can Hank Hill, you know, and, and then I'll just make a, a, a Hank Hill or I'll make like a different type of alien or a new character or something like that. And, and, and those are the things I think, uh, I really enjoy. So, you know, the, the big projects are fun, but I do enjoy like the little projects too, you know, kind of hyper focusing on something smaller rather than like the grand scheme of, uh, you know, the large projects. I got you. Okay. So the, <laughs> that's the place you've landed now, but take us back to the beginning, if you don't mind. Um, like what, what got you into glass in the first place? So, uh, I think this is, this is a good question. Cause it's always funny with me because it's a really random, uh, situation, not random, but 
Um, I actually, so like in high school and all that shit, um, I was a jock. So like kind of like I was a four-year letterman in football, four-year letterman in in track. Uh, Didn't know I could, uh, I mean, and and to be honest, I still can't draw to save my life, but didn't know I was very uh, artistic or really even had that bone in me for that that, that matter. Sure. And uh, I ended up just, you know, graduating high school i got into saltwater fish oddly enough like i'd had a fish tank when i was in high school like my and we had one at the house and then i got like into we we got a we went on a trip a family trip to whole like hawaii when i was like 17 or something like that and just like the reef i was like wow that's the coolest shit ever and so I i ended up getting into fish tanks and then i took a job at a fish store and became like the assistant manager and then i started like servicing saltwater fish tanks and stuff and started my own little uh saltwater fish tank business to where like you come into the store you purchase all the shit uh i would you know deliver it to you and i would set it up and like you know make sure because it's, it's a very technical thing when you go down like the hobbyist uh path of saltwater uh fish tanks and uh reef tanks <laughs> yeah, and shit of course Anyway, so where that ties in is uh, the the complex I worked in, a new smoke shop, Blaze, uh, opened up, and uh, a a dude had gone, a glass blower had gone in there, and then he came over to my my fish store because he was also into saltwater fish, and he was like, this was 2008, 2006, 2006 or 2007, so Seedless was like ridiculously popular, so this dude's decked Mm -hmm. out head to toe and seedless and he just like comes in he's like what's up dude <laughs> and uh the, his, his name was farmer and uh he was a local glass blower and he like worked with a, a couple other local glass blowers and, and blah 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 and at first he just was like hey like you smoke weed and i'm like uh, yeah i do you know like what's going on he's like how about like i make <laughs> a, you know fucking tight rig or well not a rig tight bong and uh you know like you give me a discount i was like all right like that sounds cool and so i gave him a discount and me a tight rig and i was young at the time and i'm i'm in a i'm from arizona and i still live here and back in that day like you there wasn't good weed out here like especially when you're young you like didn't know the right people you know it's like most people that had the good weed were like we ain't fucking giving it to young kids you know so it's like um he, <laughs> yeah he had, a, he, had a glass door, he had good weed and so it was like and then he was eventually like hey man like i got some good weed if that's what you you know uh if you need any of that. And so I eventually started going over his house, buying weed from him. And then we like saw his setup. He had a setup in the garage and uh, yeah, long story short on that end, him and the guy that taught him were opening a production company and they were just looking for people to work. And I had kind of developed a uh, relationship with the dude. And uh, he was like, Hey, like you seem like a good kid. Like you ever thought about like blowing glass? We're going to, we're looking for apprentices. And I was like, Oh man, that'd be tight. And so that's pretty much it like it was just a random like he asked if i want to be an apprentice and i was like yeah why not you know and then uh yeah and then i started making pipes so i worked production uh for a company no stress glass for the first uh six years of my career i think it was so i mean i made enough pipes to make you fucking sick like i mean that was my job i I would come in and i worked for this production company we predominantly because back then the industry was like you're you know you're talking uh i guess i started probably like five years after operation pipe dream maybe three years or so so like glass blowers were very recluse and uh you know they weren't really like you know not all glass blowers like wanted to put themselves out there and go to the you know champs had you know been still a pretty fresh show at that point uh so it's like you know these distributors were like running the game you know so like as a glass blower you would sell to a distributor distributors would then sell to all the smoke shops and all that stuff and you can kind of just hide in your garage and not deal with anybody and um so we worked for for those guys for a long time and i just have a whiteboard just full of like you know these pipes just were like you know b146 and like you know b22 and you know just these product numbers and it was like i had 100 100 100 100 you know it's just like jesus so like every day I make somewhere between 15 and, and depending on what I was making, like 30, 35 pipes for yes. about four years straight. Like that's all I was, was a pipe maker. And, and, and that drove me a little crazy. I didn't even own my own. <laughs> I didn't even own my own torch then. Cause I didn't have any money. Cause I, you know, I started when I was 19, 20. Uh, so I didn't own my own torch, but you know, obviously the company 
provided all that for me and tools and stuff. So I eventually started getting better and uh, like just being the guy at the shop out of like the five or six glass floors that was like just fucking around and trying things like here and there and like getting in trouble because like we weren't allowed to do that shit. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be That's making funny. pipes, but our bosses were cool. <laughs> the guys that own the company, they would like if we made quota. Um, we would usually get a free day on Saturday, so like Monday through Friday, if you like <laughs> made your pipes and like you know did your job like a good boy, uh, you got to work so for like no hours. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, and everybody wonders why I'm <laughs> such a cocksucker. You know what I mean? But uh, but uh, you know, it's get like, to work. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a, it was a different it was a different like time you know and i and i like yeah. kind of fell like right in the middle of it because i'm like kind of i wasn't one of the first ones to start but i wasn't like part of like i guess uh let's say like the last 10 years which would be like a new wave you know like i kind of fit yeah. like right in the yeah. middle so it's like i got I saw Those a guys. lot of that yeah a lot of that old school stuff of where yeah it was like you know people like glass blowers weren't you can just like walk up to a glass, like an older glass blower and be like, Hey man, how'd you do that? They'd be like, Hey, why don't you go fuck yourself, kid? You're like, right. Oh, yeah. okay. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, of uh, yeah. It, it was a very, uh, it was just different. And, you know, and, and none of the, none of the rigs like uh, co- uh, concentrate, none of that shit existed. So like, you didn't know, like that was it. Like it was pipes. And then like, if you want to do other shit, you made bubblers. They were like, okay, mm-hmm. well how about like double bubblers and then like triple bubblers and then like, yeah. I started yeah. working on a lathe. Like I worked on a lathe making bongs for like two years and like recyclers and shit, you know, like, so I have a lot of random, uh, skills, like, I guess under the, the belt that, you know, I don't necessarily use on like a daily basis, but you know, so I would say it gave me a very good foundation, but right. I was wrapped up into it for a while to where I was kind of like late to the party as far as like, uh, when the scene started to kind of like blow up, I was still like working for the production company and still like making a uh, production and, and running that shop. And, and stuff. honest so I watched, living. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I watched a lot of other guys like kind of start and like go out on their own, and, and, and uh, that was the toughest part of it. Is like once the headies did, like people did start making headies, and kids were working, like and 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 individuals and artists were working, like. In, you know, having the Instagram hype and stuff like that, I was still slaving away. Making production was like, I hate my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? So, at um, what point so did you, um, at what point did you kind of like broaden your horizons and really start to kind of stretch your your legs there? When you step out. Um. So, like, uh, oh, I guess enough. You know, to make an even long story longer, um, <laughs> I so it's like it's a whatever you know so i uh my 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 uh i moved out when i was 18 or 19 and you know i was starting to blow glass my parents were like well you're, you're not gonna play football like you're not gonna win this is what you're gonna do i was like yeah like you're gonna make money doing it i'm like yeah, maybe <laughs> you know and um they weren't like stoked about it but they're still supportive like my mom's a, a stoner and everything like that so it's god but they were really like this is what you're gonna do kid you know and um anyhow my stepfather ended up uh leaving my mom and so like there i have two younger brothers and it became really uh they're like in high school so it was real bad time for you know dad to be peacing out and um so i I, my mom called me one day and was like you have to move back home and i think i was like 21 22 and so i moved back home to kind of be dad uh per se and take care of my little fucking brothers and shit and then support my mom while she went to, she was a stay-at-home mom so she didn't have she so she went to med school or uh like med tech school so yep. she could at least go get a decent so um that kind of kept me in the production world longer than i wanted to like that's part of that time of when i was like fuck man like everybody else is like out having fun but like i need a paycheck like you know i need the consistency sure. you know and so after that happened i ended up meeting my wife like two years into that and i'd say that you know i was tired of doing it I saw people doing it and I just made the decision that I was like, I guess if I want it, my road's going to be like, I'm going to have to fucking double time it, you know? So I went and worked my production job and then I finally bought a torch. We're talking, it was like six, seven years into my career. They're like five and a half, six years. I bought a torch. I set up a table in my garage with like Hardy backer, like demo style, uh, a homie, low, like fucking $1,200 to buy a kiln. 
and um you know i had a garbage can for a fucking uh <laughs> you know for a uh for a hood I had a little garbage right, can yeah. <laughs> and uh and i and i made it work so i'd go home i'd go to work and at the time i worked on the lathe so i was making a little bit better money so i'd go in make like 10 bongs and then i'd do my you know eight hours and i'd go home my wife who was my girlfriend at the time you know maybe dinner and she'd sit out there and I, and I would just start trying to make little sculptures and I started trying to hustle them and I started getting on Instagram at that point uh, and then just worked on trying to hustle it and sell it. Eventually, I ended up getting some business and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think it was took, took probably about six months to make a little bit of money. And then like a year, I was like, you know, basically could go to, went to my boss was like, look, man, you know, like I made, you know, twenty five hundred bucks the whole month you know, doing production, you know, like making like $1,200 paychecks. And I was like, uh, I made four grand this month on the side, you know? And at that point, he like, you know, we were good friends. I'd worked for him for seven years at that point. He was like, Hey man, he's like, I get it. He's like, you know, I knew that today was coming, you know? And so then like, finally, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then, um, so I helped him, uh, you know, still kind of maintain the shop. So I eventually I rented space in our production studio and, and made sure that uh, the guys working and shit didn't, you know, burn down the place. Cause I don't know if you've ever been part of a production operation, it's like, it's a fucking huge revolving door and uh, you got new kids in all the time. You got kids leaving people coming, you got people that came back and causing problems. It's just a shit show. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah and, I, I started in one of those. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I told him that I would like still be there. I was like, I'm not working for you, but like, I'll still be there. And, uh, you know, he paid me to do that, which basically kind of covered my rent. So it was just kind of like a, you know, an even trade there. And then, uh, yeah, just started working on it. And then eventually I think, uh, it was probably about another seven, eight years ago. I, I ended up getting my own studio where I am right now and, uh, just been here ever since. Very good. And that kind of gave you the freedom to start doing some of these more sculptural things or were you doing like production sculptural work before? I mean, because that's like what I knew. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I still, I mean, I'm a very honest dude. I mean, it's like, uh, I still do that kind of, <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, I have 15, you know, different maybe styles. I mean, 10 or so that are still, that are pretty popular, um, that I make. Um, and so, I always like to branch off of that, but if I start taking orders and stuff, uh, obviously, you know, people want to buy what they know and, and what, you know, it, uh, resonates with them as far as my, you know, brand or my style or whatever. So, you know, sure. you just naturally end up making the, the stuff, you know, the ones that have been pretty popular over the last couple of years, like, you know, the, the one, the invader that's being made in that demo, uh, that's a, that's a, that's become like, I guess a staple you know we're all constantly asking for those and prior to that nice. it was like my jammerai uh piece which i guess that thing's sitting behind me back oh, yeah. there of course you know like that, that kind of that skull, that skull samurai uh you know like that was a piece that everybody you know was like oh that's it and oddly enough it you know a lot of the like sculptural work you know i had a guy in town here he was like hey can you make a charizard and uh i was never uh, into, into Pokemon, but I was like, well, I was like, if you're down with it, like, kind of being like my uh, style of one, like, yeah, why not, you know? And so I made him one of those, and then I think I, you know, people enjoyed that, and I ended up making like 200 something variants of that particular <laughs> nice. you know, rig. That's what's and, up. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't know, dude. You I'm know, lagged out. It's, I it's, think what's up? Everything's buddy? like everything's lagged out on there just oh. popping in and then we did get a question from uh earlier from uh queen bee glass asking um about how many hours did you put into that glass vegas piece that was the uh, hunter s thompson mm. that Good one question. i didn't keep track for it but i did work uh five days on it before i went out there uh you know doing the the his face like you know because i the way with the the champs competitions are is you, whatever you can fit in a box like a uh sometimes they change it to a four by four i think this one was particular a six by six so whatever you can fit in the box you can make prior to the yeah. uh 
the the thing and then uh, that particular competition we went a little risk that's that's kind of what i like you know sometimes like to do uh but it it was uh we had seven hours to put that together so nothing was assembled on that piece like the whole base was constructed um and uh the one the cool part about that piece is probably like two and a half years ago i'm, I'm losing track of time but i don't know two or three years ago maybe four i don't know but i I, I, I was like oh, yeah I, yeah i really uh millies and i always have and uh you know it's a whole different ball game and i was just, just like you know what i was like i'm just gonna like a class doing them or anything like that. I mean, just from what I've seen from, uh, you know, either friends or, or dudes that I've known that have made millies and stuff. Uh, you know, Dapo was out here for a while and, and guys like Grim, you know, so some pretty good, you know, yeah. millie makers were out here in Arizona already. Uh, but anyways, decided to try to teach myself how to make millies for like the Hunter S. Thompson because like if, on the bottom there is all these, you know, skull poker yep. chips. And, you know, that was a, a pull I did just for you know that piece like you know and that's that's kind of why i learned how to pull millies was just so i could do shit like that i guess um and uh so yeah the hunter i think i think it was either four or five days uh on the sculpture itself and then there was a day of uh pulling the millie and then there was time lapping the piece and, and hick dog put in some hours too so there, there's there's quite a bit of work in in that piece and uh that the funny part about a little uh fun fact of that piece is uh the back vegas sign is all hand drawn like i told you guys earlier i can't draw uh i didn't do any stippling or anything like that uh just you know kind of calipering it you know based off of a picture that i kind of you know blew up and then uh but also uh i'm i'm left-handed like uh, i write left-handed uh i am ambidextrous and you know, as far as sports goes but uh i write left-handed but what i learned how to blow glass right-handed so all of that sign was hand drawn, but with my right hand and not my left hand, which is always kind of funny. <laughs> that is interesting. That's really neat. Yeah. That, <laughs> that is yeah. Really neat. You know, how you like I, working with Hickson? Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, go yeah. ahead. That's a great question. He's James. Yeah, the shit. I mean, he's 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 the homie. I love yeah, Hickson. Tell him I say what's yeah. up. He's like, oh, um, he's uh, like a legend here, man. We filmed him quite a bit, and he's a friend, and he's the best. He's a great guy got. too. He's really nice. Really enjoy the time hanging out with him when I do. He's uh, oddly enough, and and that's kind of how we are out here in Arizona. We're kind of um, we're nice people, but we're <laughs> dicks at the same time. And yeah. uh, we. Yeah. Oh, he's been not... he's been a dick. <laughs> I just play. Well, his uh, his house and his shop. He works from home. He uh, is about a mile and a half from my studio. And uh, oh, cool. yeah. okay, so you guys come up very rarely, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. so it was, it was funny. nice to up, but we we lean on each other, shit from each other, uh, occasionally. Like, I'll be like, hey man, do you have an extra K tank? And he's like, yeah, I do, come grab it, and vice versa. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, and uh, so we definitely are out. And, and I've known Hick Dog, uh, pretty much my entire career, like, he was already kind of going. Uh, when I first started, and I remember watching him at a demo at It's All Goods, uh, which was like a place that did a lot of live glass blowing, you know, back in the day. And um, so, yeah, and then I was a fan of his work. And then uh, I think he took a little hiatus, you know, in the mid uh, 2000s. And then uh, he came back. And then, you know, so then, yeah, ever since then, uh, you know, we, we work together periodically. And we see each other and we try to support uh, the events and stuff that we kind of do. Like, I have a big. Uh, event coming up next week that we call it's it's like a hendy's heady holiday nice. and uh like made it to where there's uh there's usually 20 to 25 uh local glass blowers that i get out to this uh, uh one of our local smoke shops and they're in like downtown uh arts kind of district down there but we do like a big like glass uh holiday market you know so i do get other vendors that like make like jewelry and clothing and you know, all local companies and like get some food trucks out and we just, you know, we have fires and blast, you know, Christmas music and like decorate and shit. And uh, Dude, just have awesome. like a, yeah, there's like 25 glass board. I encourage guys like, you know, I'll do like what I call like door busters where I got like hundred dollar pendants and like, you know, just, yeah, we, yeah. we're trying, we're going to try to entice people like, Hey, like instead of buying, you know, the fucking, you know, buying your, your grandma fucking $30, you know, uh, 
Starbucks gift card or some shit. Like get her a right. fucking pair of earrings or like a little marble or something like that. And and we don't yeah. I don't discriminate on like who gets to come. It's first come first serve. So it's like you know there'd be a kid that just started a year ago. And then upwards, the guys like, you know, Hick Dog, who I think is 22 years in and I'm 17 years in, you know, like, so it's, it's a pretty diverse crowd as far as like what kind of stuff you're going to get there. Uh, and all types of glass blowers too, you know, guys that just literally make cups and marbles or guys that just do functionals, guys that, you know, make jewelry. So it's, it's a fun event and, um, you know, I'm excited to put it on. <laughs> And, and where's yeah. that again? It's it's uh, is it Clarksville, Arizona, or whereabouts? I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the meat of it. I'm I'm like my we're, I'm basically uh, Phoenix is is where we're at. But you know Phoenix is okay, just, cool. Like, any major city is just tons of sub you know developments. So like Hick Dog, yeah, Rider, yeah, suburbs, we're from Chan- yeah. Chandler, yeah. But you know it's like we're Chandler, about Chandler. Chandler, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're like twenty right on. twenty minutes. You're you're right though. Uh, Clarksdale is like, uh, but that's more up north. That's kind of a smaller town. Uh, that closer north, like think, Sedona uh, and all that. And... Yeah, Hensley is uh, from from there. Uh, Hensley Glass. Yeah. Art, he's a nice dude. Oh um, yeah, Austin up, yeah. man, that's the homie. Yeah, he's the up homie. in. Uh, I think it's either Clarksdale, maybe I don't know if it's Cornville up there. I can't remember what it is, but he's in one yeah, of those. Yeah, there's areas. there's another one of those sea towns up there. Beautiful area up there. Got to see. Oh man, right through there earlier this year. Love it out yeah, there. So you've never yeah. been to Sedona? You gotta check it out. It's fucking. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, not to interject, guys, but I did want to add, Austin. I believe he's doing a demo at Glass Vegas this year. So he's oh, going to be taking, uh, yeah. he'll be taking the stage and uh, I hope to document it. It's always a tough call when, you know, it's like being at a music festival when two of your favorite bands are on, you know, and, and that's what it is. <laughs> Glass Vegas has two stages, sometimes with multiple artists up. It's just a really great thing. Not, I'm not trying to be all like, hey, guys, we got to promote Glass Vegas. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. But when I heard Austin's name promote came up, Arizona I was like, glass blowers, man. yeah, he, he's on the lineup this year. So I was pretty excited to hear his name mentioned. Um, and as long as I'm like got the mic, I wanted to say something, dogs. Um, I know we, we like totally teased you starting the demo earlier. <laughs> like, psych, Hendy's here. We're going to talk for half an hour. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's awesome, dude. This is Torch Talk. It's really the opportunity to chat with you and learn about your path. Um, and what I wanted to add to that, guys, like I hope you're taking some notes already. Like, there's some subtle things here, dude. Like your production background, the way you had a catalog, that sort of shit. I think is what a lot of people right now they're missing that fundamental component. And I and I and I'm not trying to like tell anybody why things aren't working or whatever. The whole industry is tough, but in a moment like this, if you're that guy who has like a consistent catalog, you know you're known to shops or distributors to be as reliable as that company with a catalog full of china glass. Um, I I think that's really important right now. And like homies, if you're trying to fight this thing out as things kind of settle into a new, um, a new paradigm or you know whatever kind of things settle back to, I sincerely think about how you're presenting your work to shops. Like especially if you're making production, you know, give it that code number so they know they order that shit. That's what they're getting every time. You know, you need to be that consistent dude. And it's just something I really took away from what you were talking about, man. And I, I, I feel like, and if, if you're like a next level, you know, if you're really able to take it to the next level, maybe you don't need to worry about this. But for those of us like bread and butter glass workers trying to knock this thing out and, you know, every now and then get to do something that's more to exactly our vision, uh, the missing component is some of that business stuff you know having that catalog having a product code i'm not saying you need to make it a code but like that production mindset and consistency in the pieces and being that reliable to a shop i don't know i think it's i think it's really important right now and something folks could like take away from your background and you know, and how you even mentioned you still kind of approach it that way, even though you're making much sicker pieces, you know, you still kind of bring that mindset to it. And, and if a shop orders 10 invaders, you know, like three of them aren't going to be fucking weird. 
they're all going to be exactly what they wanted. And, right. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're always evolving at whatever in this industry, uh, business wise, artistically, whatever it ends up being. I think uh, in the current moment, we're, we're facing like a lot of different things. Um, you know, there was a recession and shit back in, you know, 2008 or whatever it was. And, uh, this industry was relatively resilient, but like the pieces like there, I don't want to say there wasn't like nice pieces being made, but like, I mean, you could go into like a shop that was pretty popular out here was called trails and trails is one of the first places that started supporting like Darby Depe and, um, MNP, uh, some of those guys that were like kind of old school cats. And I'm, I'm talking like a fully worked MNP bubbler was like $500. You know, a Darby piece was 500 bucks because that was a lot of fucking money for a glass piece back then, you know, 500, $800. Sure. Um, you know, so it's just a different time. So now we're kind of fighting, um, you know, our industry is just like, and, and the progression of like what pieces are being made now in comparison to then is obviously you know uh, uh, undeniably better sure. um but yeah now we're struggling with like okay well you know obviously you make those nicer pieces like you want to get paid more uh and i think you know a lot of people shit myself included just don't have as much money as we used to you know like i'm still making relatively the same money that i have been making i would say that it was a little bit better two years ago um uh, sure. but it's just that your dollar is not going as far anymore and, and not to, and not to get into any type of politics, like, you know, politics right. aside, it's like, that's the fucking truth. You know, it's yeah, like everybody that. is just struggling a little bit. And yeah. uh, so what's the first thing that you think that you probably shouldn't do? Well, you know, maybe buying a two, $3,000 piece isn't, you know, yeah. fucking top right. of your list. And um, so that's one of the, you know, waves that this business constantly kind of does. Uh, and it just takes a while. You know, just like, uh, you know, whatever you compare it to the housing market or whatever it may be. It just like takes time. Like we'll go like this and then, you know, obviously we're going to reach our bubble and then, you know, it'll kind of taper off. And every time the bubble is kind of different, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I think that that's what we're at right now is just that, you know, uh, people don't have as much money. Prices of sure. stuff got up there because it's really fucking cool. And then the age of our industry is like, you know, there's so many pieces that are in circulation now, you know, sure. like that, that, like, you know, I've made tons of headies, you know, so there's tons of handies out there and it is glass and they do break, but I mean, there's still a lot of stuff right. out there. So then you, you have people, um, you know, selling, you know, reselling, or you got guys that have collections that are like, fuck, I'd like to buy a new piece right now, but you know what? Like, I'm going to just, you know, see if I can find homes for, you know, a couple of these so I can buy a new piece. And sure. so there's just a lot of different uh, scenarios and different circumstances, I think, that are happening currently that never yeah. were before. And then, you know, on top of that, there was Instagram and now artists and shops. <laughs> um, we both have access to the customers. And, and, and uh, so then you really have to decide on how you're going to navigate that because when things are fucking popping off, and uh, you maybe go tell a shop to go fuck yourself. It's not nice to have to, you know, yeah. swallow you'll swallow your words, right. you know, a couple years hey, later. About that. Kind of, I was yeah, just kidding. Come, or whatever, like George hey, Costanza. Quick or question, though, for the weed heads, though. Did, they, did the federal government make it okay for cannabis growers to put their money in banks over the in last Arizona? couple of years at some point? No, it's nationwide or anywhere where people are, uh, you know, selling no. weed. I think I remember seeing something. Is it still federally illegal to put that money in banks? Well, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. be the right guy to ask. However, I do know that it's like everything with everything that we do is like it's a third party thing. That's what it feels like. They always say that it's like, sure. oh, well, you know, we can decide, you know, whether it's even with us and like PayPal or any of my merchant services or whatever. I mean, they pretty much had by the fucking balls of just being like, anytime they'd be like, yeah, your shit violates our, we're not going to allow you to take payments anymore. And you're like, well, I don't even do anything illegal. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. But like, you know what? It's like, PayPal. I think it's along kind of the similar uh, premises, but you know, any smart business has an, you know, an LLC that has nothing to do with, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
the ganja, you know, any, cause I do work with some uh, dispensaries and stuff like that. And I, I tell you right now, I've never been paid by, uh, you know, Zen leaf, like, you know, dispensary or like, you know, true, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm always getting paid by, blah 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 wellness right. and supply company you know like yeah, you're getting you know? paid by like the so, breaking bad car wash or whatever yeah you know well, so, i don't uh, know if that was current events or not so is, that had been a question in my theory to like why some of this glass isn't going out the door like it was and it, also the inflation and everything like that as well but yeah, yeah i mean, I, mean that was, <laughs> I think you know there's a lot of factors there is because you could argue the fact that you know it's more difficult to do shit with cash these days you know what i mean and so it's like yeah. you know oxygen's you, more expensive and people have less money and all kinds of different complaints yeah i mean color color is up oxygen's up yeah uh, electricity cost is up you know it's like my rent is up my insurance is up you know everything rent is way, uh... yeah operating costs are all you know i mean my i just you know i'm in a you know i, I think i've been my third lease here at my spot but you know just today my 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 uh rent went up another 60 dollars because you know i'm in a tiered system mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like you know when i first started renting this shop that i'm in now i paid like uh 1080 you know and i paid 1400 now which you know in today's standards like it's not bad uh you know yeah I got like 12, that's 1200, a good... 1200 square foot shop you know so it's like i'm not complaining but i'm just saying you know it's, it's up four hundred dollars you know and it's like yeah oxygen fortunately i, I get a, a decent deal but i mean it's still expensive i got there's uh three other guys that, I, that work in my shop so i mean steve h glass works in here uh friday glass and then uh reverend uh remorse uh, is another is a guy that works in here too and uh so we you know there's times if we're all cooking i mean we'll, we blow through doers you know we use big doers and uh, yeah. But, you know, so we'll, we'll buy four doers a month, you know, and they're 235 bucks a pop, you know. And yeah. so it's like you just start really starts eating it up. Like, you know, having the shop, like I like the separation of uh, house and shop, but it's definitely an operating cost, you know, for sure. You know, absolutely. It's yeah, one of the up. reasons I'm working to get back into a house because a home studio, you know, especially with generated oxygen is just like quite a bit less overhead and. A little bit more uh whatever but right now i mean honestly my glass the shop that i rent at shout out tesla glassworks it's like right down the road Word. like literally like it's i can walk to the shop to the job where i work now and i did want to add something kai to what you were talking about earlier because um the company i work with is a big established company but it's in the cannabinoid space and uh it's it's i don't know maybe i'm getting too personal here but like i i can't get direct deposit like they have to issue me like a paper check and it's because of the industry that they're in i don't think that any bank wants to like set that shit up for them or something so it's, some liability issues it's no big deal i mean i just take a picture of the check on my wells fargo app and everything's cool but it did come to mind when you were mentioning that and uh you know, huh. part, part of me yeah. wants to be like, uh, no comment, you know, or whatever kind of thing. But at the same token, we can't deny that, like, back in the day, some more weed money was may maybe flowing through the business. And uh, I feel like that was part of, like, the last, like, bubble burst, though. You know what I mean? Right it, now, it I, was, think it's, yeah. I think it's a lot of, Hendy, what you were talking uh, about, uh, just the current state of the world. And I will add one thing. I'm not an economist, but I read the economist. Or <laughs> I'm whatever. not a smart man, yeah, but I read what I mean, they I mean. say. No, but but like you no know, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, like America, where 98 percent of this business is. I don't mean to exclude Canada or whatever. You know anybody else? Or my boys out in fucking England and Scotland, but uh, America has actually kind of weathered the current global inflation situation semi well. Like we're fucked. But, like, other countries are, like, fucked way worse. Like, sometimes you just have to take a little bit of a look on the bright side. Uh, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything or, like, attribute any of that to anybody. These things are, like, long cycles. Who the fuck knows who's responsible for ups or downs when, you know what I mean? But 
legitimately america like the rest of the world's inflation is actually significantly worse than america right now Uh, what i'm saying is things could be way more fucked up and like yeah so i just want to say Uh, kai i'm not i know it's a hard time i just wanted to say like 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 we all got to look on the bright side and like this isn't even a fantasy like like my good friends you know over there in england and scotland it's worse for them trust me food cost of living energy prices all that like 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 we're it's it's bad here like i'm not trying to pretend things are all roses but um it's just something that gives me the, pause the random, i think the random part about it for me is just like personally you know it's like i feel like it just snuck up on me that's what i didn't like about it you know it's like i felt yeah, like course. everything was going good yeah and then all of a sudden i was like what what the, what the fuck what, sure. what? you know <laughs> like you know and um <laughs> And and that's just kind why of are eggs like, fifty dollars. Yeah, right. seriously, you know, like why, you know, and uh, yep, you know, it, we uh, and you know, I got small kids, so we try to watch uh, organic. You know, yeah. I've got stuff. three, dude. It's yeah, a, so it's been know, awesome. Yeah, so it's like it, your bill gets up there. You know, you're you know, you're buying you know organic milk and you know all that shit. And it's like you know, it's like I'll yeah, do all that. <laughs> yeah, it's like seven dollars a gallon or some shit or eight bucks. You know. Got <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like, I grew up eating all the, uh, you know, crafts, fucking food and all that shit. Now as I'm, I'm adult and I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, it's like, you know, there's some information out there that, you know, we shouldn't be eating that shit. So it's like, I don't want to give it to my kids, you know, but fuck, is it expensive? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Sure. So like, yeah. I'd love to be but, able to eat healthier, but shit, I'm yeah. no economist. Or grocery shopper. I'm not great at it, so. Yeah, yeah. I know, man. We, I'm on we, like, we don't throw fits. I'm currently addicted to the McDonald's app because they have free fries with like a $2 purchase. And then I've Dude, got this hack. This is the hack. I'm going to share it with you guys out there because I know we're all struggling. Um, fucking, all right. We all like chicken sandwiches, the dank kind. Can we talk like this during the demo? <laughs> Well, with the demo, we're going to focus on the demo because we already spent like an hour talking about the industry and everything, say, which is I, I actually so, to, uh, so important right now. Say, we probably got to, go, I got to wake up at 4 a.m., dog. I got kids. I got to get going, but, you know, because I got to, uh, I got to get back to the house, but, you know, I'm going to get back to the house, but. Hey, man. I understand. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it, okay, here's the hack, though. You get the McSpi- the spicy McChicken. Remove the lettuce and mayonnaise, add pickles, bam, it's like the same damn sandwich for two bucks. And then you add the free large fries, it's like you're just eating so much food for two dollars. That's why the wow. McDonald's app has me. All right, all right, <laughs> hey, all right, let's get into the demo. Let's actually pop this motherfucker Roll off. Roll <laughs> that demo. We're doing Roll it. that sweet bean footage, man. Come on. Hell yeah. All right, we're just going to take one minute and uh, acknowledge these sponsors who have made this beautiful Thanks dream of time. mine uh of of providing you guys with high quality coverage I mean, we started as kind of what we just did you know talking forever and you know this is just a it's an interesting time in our industry i'm, I'm really glad we got to have this conversation actually um it might be a, just a little more important than the demo to know that you know we're all struggling out here and trying to figure out you know what's up but um, like I was saying, man, my heart remains with this work that we're doing right now, uh, providing this high quality coverage and documenting an important moment in just glass history, period. Glass has a long and storied history, but 100 years from now, they're going to be like, those pipe makers completely fucking changed the game. And it's really important to document. And those companies... And you guys pitching in on the channel membership or Torch Pass, I said that's why it's possible. So here we are. We're at Glass Vegas. This is the beginning of the demo, as I recall, right? I didn't like cut out you shaping that body. Dude, sweet setup. <laughs> am I am I able to see this? Am yes. I, give me one spot? second, actually. Let me change the settings. Okay. I was I was trying to like make my webcam appear in the conversation earlier, but now. Oh, if you, there you uh, go. Yeah, if you click on my webcam, you'll be able to see exactly what the audience is seeing. So this there is where you, this is where you started, as I recall. Yeah. So obviously, 
actually limited for time in mm-hmm. Las Vegas. Um, they could get right. three hours, if I remember right. So I, Yeah, that's I, right. I made some stuff ahead of time. You know, I think when you, when I'm doing demos, at least, like I want people to see something. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into glass blowing that, like, if you're just watching, like, a lot of the prep, you're like, this is fucking boring. <laughs> you know, so I try to bring yeah. some stuff, uh, like, already – so I could kind of be doing assembly, uh, you know, if I'm doing like a, a shorter demo. So that way there's like a little bit of a show that can be put on, you know. Oh, man, I finally got rid of that torch tip. That that guy, man, it served <laughs> me well. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like you've done some surgery to it. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Well, that, you know, it, it, I dropped it a few times and then it and then. It, but then what was weird is like I ended up liking like how fucking bent it was because like i can like get it in all these random spaces okay and so as shitty as it was and you know crappy that it looked i was like it's actually <laughs> i really liked it um Fuck you yeah. know and so when it finally kind of took a shit i was like oh no but um yeah. yeah and what are you adding right now you've added some glass and you're just kind of cooking it in all nice Wh- which part of the face is this uh that's the mouth i guess mouth. you could say okay. yeah you know start with that, that, that mouth yeah, that'll get the teeth later and everything. This is such an incredible demo, man. Yeah, you started with some of it pre-done, but like you really saved the best for the show, kind of thing. Yeah, you save some of the sculpting. You know, it's like, um, and and you know, a lot of what uh, I guess you know to carry in the conversation from earlier. You know, with me, um, the, a lot of the what production taught me was that like you know, I have uh, you know when I've taught classes, I, I call it a recipe. Uh, you know, a relationship with the glass, you know, so it's like, you know, like I'm usually relatively pretty fluid because uh, I already, you know, obviously I've done this a couple of times, but I've also, you know, I, I know what I'm like doing. So I'm like, oh, you know, I do this, I do that, I do that. So everything has like, you know, a particular process. And when you're sculpting, uh, a lot of it's about layers. Like, you know, it's like you don't want to be necessarily adding a bunch of glass, but you have to think of when you're creating the sculpture as layers like what is the base layer going to look like and like that's kind of like pre-shape and like you know knowing that if i'm going to put cheeks in later like how am i setting up where that's going and you know and all this stuff so a lot of it is like initially you know what you're going to see is going to be more bland it's going to be raw shaping it's you know like here i'm pushing eye sockets but i'm going to go back and detail that later you know not everybody likes to do that but that's like my style of like you know i'll push the eye socket but then I'm going to come back later and kind of make it more dramatic, you know, to kind of give it some character uh, and stuff like that. So, like, you know, basically what we're doing right here is like the the bottom most layer of all that, you know, like right here. I'm starting to add a little like uh, air passage to be able to add on uh, more color to puff into, you know, make a cheek, basically. So it's like, you know, first I'm just going to manipulate the wall just a little bit to kind of create a little bit of a nipple there. And then I'll come back and I'll add glass to where I created that nipple to be able to blow into like the solid glass that I, that I add to it. You know, in, in my opinion, um, I do kind of create more hard, um, acute angles and stuff that most people don't like to do because it's dangerous. But if, if you can manipulate the wall thickness and, and to, the, to the best of your ability, keep the wall thickness the same even though you're doing these manipulations and these cuts uh with a good heat base you can get away with it okay yeah that's so that's important i mean be it in this like intense sculptural area may probably more important but having that glass even and taking those steps in advance to you know not have this thick ass like if you just added the globs to make those cheek shapes then you'd have this weird ass thick area and rel- you know relative to the rest that's you know especially as you start trying to add carving or add detail that's going to be a stress point it can be yeah you know and then also what ends up happening is like you know when you um add glass to uh the surface you know it's like if let's just say you're you're prepped you know so that uh alien head there is probably you know anywhere from like two five to three five millimeters thick yeah uh when you add something on so now i added that mouth on there well now we're at you know about 10 millimeters thick so 
the way that the <coughs> mouth is going to retain and hold heat versus the, the, the hollow part of the sculpture is going to be completely different. And like, yeah. that's where you end up running into problems is that if you can't start uh, distinguishing between those two and learning how to mesh those two thicknesses with a heat base, then, you know, that's where you get problems, you know? Sure. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it takes me back to like learning with uh, Roger Paramore and mm -hmm. like he, he spent a big portion of the first day kind of giving us this lecture about the difference between uh, thermal and mechanical stress and yeah. what triggers it and entropy in glass and how heat moves through the glass. And all of this was kind of a prerequisite to uh, doing everything in the class without kilns. And uh, right. it was incredibly informative. Um, you know, thermal stress is going to be, let's just assume that you left a giant thick glob there and hadn't even carved on it much. And then you flashed uh, the, the wall of the tube that difference in the uh, ability of the glass to like absorb heat because it's so much thicker that could trigger a thermal stress 100 percent, yeah that's 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 and, like nine times out of ten that's what's kind of breaking you know unless you're if you're fundamentally not sound and you know you're not making good welds and sure um you know things like that i mean obviously those will do you in but you know if you're fundamentally sound nine i don't want to be like nine times out of 10, yeah. seven, <laughs> seven to eight times out of ten yeah. most of your cracks and your problems are coming from something of that nature whether you add it on too much like for instance like if i can i i will try to avoid solid heat and and super solid things on my sculptures as much as i can because mm. it's there's there's different the amount of heat, so it's like, you know, when I backfire a, a hollow section, I can get it to 100% hot again. And then as I'm working with it, I'll let it drop to maybe, you know, 70, 60 percent, and then I'll get back into the flame and I'll heat it back in. When you have a solid piece, once it starts to lose temperature and it gets, uh, you know, cooler, when you go reheat it, you gotta, you gotta, I basically give it a whole nother fucking reheat for right. that core temperature to reach 100 again so what sure. ends up happening is is you start making semi of a thermal in, in between you know your heat up so it's like if you let it get down to let's just say 60 percent for the sake of this analogy and then you go to refire it because it's attached to other hollow stuff and all that you know blah 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 you get your hollow sculpture back up to 100 percent, but your solid might be like 80 or like 90. so now your time of how long you can be out and what the fuck you can do and uh, potential issues of shocking from flashing just starts to increase. So the longer and the longer and the longer you're out, the more and more that becomes a problem. And, uh, and, and that's kind of a interesting concept, you know, and I, and I teach it sometimes when I'm, when I'm uh, teaching classes and stuff, but nice, it's something that you kind of just have to learn. The shitty part is you break a lot of stuff <laughs> along that process. Right. Uh, but I think what's important is, uh, you know, I didn't always have a bunch of people telling me like what the fuck happened. Uh, so like, I kind of had to like, I'm a very analytical type of person, which I think helps for what I do. Um, because I'd sit there and be like, well, what the fuck? Like, why did that break? Like what happened? You know what I mean? Not that I'm like, most of the time it's my fault, but I'm just like, what did I do? Sure. Like, why, why didn't it survive? You know? And then, the harder and the more detailed that you get into the sculptures, uh, the fucking, the more that is just like, well, I don't know. It could have been fucking a hundred things at this point. Cause it's like, you know, I'm yeah. looking at this hunter piece right now. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of solid pieces on it with hollow pieces. And then obviously you have colors and you got cuts and you got, I got fine sculpting with like solid sculpting. And it's just, it's a shit show. Uh, and I think at one point, you know, it's like I probably had without the base, you know, I'd, I'd have the hunter out for, you know, 10 minutes or so or longer, mm -hmm. you know, just working on it and adding stuff on. And it's just, you know, over time, I've developed a, a, a good relationship with that whole kind of like heat base, you know, that I like to call it. like I use like, you know, just the, the charging analogy to kind of put it into somewhat of a perspective to understand. I like it. That's a cool analogy. Yeah, and that's what you can see I'm doing here. Yeah. Like even as I'm working on this sculpture, 
you know, it's like I have uh, an internal clock, you know, that you just develop over time. And so like my brain uh, subconsciously, it'll just be like heat, like you need yeah, to fucking yeah. put in the heat. Like you'll just see me stopping. Yeah. You know, just stop what I'm doing. And now when it's like, I'm making something like this that I've made some, um, you know, I, I might, you know, know that like, okay, well after this step, it needs heat after this step, it needs heat. But sometimes you'll see me just stopping in the middle of like what I'm doing. Like I might be cooking something in like, kind of like how it just was there. Like I was cooking something yep. in, but I was just like, Nope, needs the heat. Like, you know, my brain right. will just go off and it's like, Nope, got to heat it up. Cause I've learned my lesson. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, yeah, no, uh, you, you got to touch the stove. And then when, when I yeah. hear that voice in my brain, I'm like, all right, I got to respect this because every time I didn't, that's when shit got weird. So, well, that's yeah, kind you... of the fun. That's the fun part of the experience eventually coming in because like, you know, it becomes automatic. Like, you know, I'm sure. not sitting here, you know, going like, oh, I need to heat it. It's like, you just, you know, you just do it because it becomes automatic and you know, yep. you know, what, what's right. going on. Yep. And um, something I just wanted to add to this that I think we've talked about a bit on the show. It, it you know, it comes from filming with the homie Salt a lot, and cats who Thank really you. do this uh, like high level sculpting. Um, this type of work in the beginning to make sure everything is like happy and kept hot before the real detail starts getting carved in. And that's where we get into that issue of mechanical stress, you know, where the glass is being put into orientations that it's not, you know, organically happy with. Borosilicate is pretty magical. It's happy to do most of it. But at a certain point, you have to recognize that mechanical stress is also a thing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the real killer, in my opinion is the combo of the two, you know, like you can get away with yeah. so much, you know, but if you're going to trigger one stress or another with, you know, without that being cognizant of it, that's where problems happen. And uh, what, I, what I'm getting to is that this laying in things and having them really happy before the fine detail goes in, is like, in my opinion, having observed a lot of this, it's just critical to being able to do that fine detail work later without having, you know, catastrophic issues. Pretty so, much, you know, and, that, and yeah. that, takes, that just takes time, you know, as much as I would love to be able to explain that to somebody, it's just, you just, you know, you eventually learn it. Cause like what I've always realized too, is like when I worked at the production studio, you know, I taught a lot of kids how to make pipes and, and uh, you know, I've had an apprentice or two over the years and people in the shop that I've tried to help <clears throat> sculpt and stuff. And it's like, what you kind of just realize is that, you know, I, 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 you end up like, like a guy like salt, he probably even sees the glass. Uh, you know, if you want to like, think of it as like a crazy, you know, hippie, not like a hippie way, but like a crazy, like, you know, like, a, you know, you look at it as like a dimension, you know, it's like, sure. of course, it's three dimensional, but like what we're looking at, like when I look at the glass and I'm making this sculpture, I'm looking at it and I, I guess you can't fully explain it because it's going on in here, but I'm looking at it a lot different than other people are, are looking at it or somebody, you know what I mean? And it's like, what I've noticed when I teach people is that like, these sometimes when you're uh, learning and you're not as skilled, you just don't see it. Like that door isn't open in your head right. yet because sure. you just haven't, re you just haven't reached that level. And, um, and that's what a lot of what, what some artists, like the guys that are up there in the sculptural world, like that's what lets us like, I wouldn't say get away with it, but you know, a lot of times if you look at my work, you'll see that it is, clean like you know there's there has to be a level of cleanliness to make it work like you were saying um however there's stuff that you're like damn like how does he like that's pretty sh like that's a that's a hard angle right there like what did he what did he do and it's like it's just it's, it's like yeah and it's like and it's yeah. but it's because i've learned how to just like do it you know the right way you know it's like it's down you know because it's like it's been layered properly and, and set up for that yep. move and um and it's just that's the type of stuff that you know just you know will take practice and and you know and you can be shown it and everything like that but you just really have to like think about those fundamentals of like okay if i'm planning on putting this here then like i need to make sure that base layer is cooked in i need to make sure that 
I keep it hot, you know, cause after every time you add stuff, you know, you just run into more problems. And sometimes like, you know, if I hand off something of mine to a uh, younger artist or a, a less involved or whatever, it's like, you know, they'll break my shit. Like it'll just blow apart. You know, it's like, I would have been fine with it. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, um, and it's like, and that's kind of thing. And then vice versa. Like when I work with a lot of people and I'm doing, uh, they're like, um, like, you know, when, when I'm doing collabs and stuff, it, they're, they're, a lot of people are just like, oh, we'll just send Hendy shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, I do a lot of collabs with, you know, people that make really cool, uh, tubing and things like that. You know, people like ScoMo and, and, uh, big, uh, big Z and like, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, karma, you know, guys that are like, you know, cause they're like, yo, we'll send it to him. We'll let him fucking do all the, <laughs> the, the, the crazy <laughs> sketchy shit to it. Right. <laughs> the know? detail like, work, the detail man. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, it, you know, because it's like, yeah, like a lot of people are like, you know, and you're kind of, you're kind of like on those sides. It's like, you know, like vice versa for me, you know, like I'm not a guy, like I don't do a lot of, uh, complex seals and, and things like that. So like you hand some of those fucking, you know, like a, uh, uh, like a, like a fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, like I always say his name wrong too. It's, it's, it's a siren apparatus. Is that what it is? Um, I think so. It sounds right to me. Yeah. Is it like some, you know, sometimes I've never heard it said out loud. So <laughs> yeah. So either way, uh, yeah. he's got what, tons of complex seals in there and you know, like guys like, you know, yeah, whatever, bluegrass, you know, those guys that are, 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 awesome lathe makers that you know like i ain't fucking doing that shit like you know it's like i have an understanding of keeping stuff hot but like you know we all have our things you know and so um mine is just you know sculptural work and uh and and that's what i think is kind of cool about glass blowing is that there's the the techniques to do all the different shit are all so different that you could really kind of just go down this rabbit hole of you know kind of like you know i don't necessarily like i like to be adventurous and try all sorts of different sculptures but the 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 category of sculptures is its own fucking venture on its own like you know scientific work and you know complex seal work and then even complex pattern work you know i mean there's stuff that like you know i i don't do any of that shit you know and it's like and why would i if there's guys out there that make like really fucking cool patterns like you know i've done it for fun because i do like to try to grow as an artist um but you know, when it really comes down to it, I mean, there's guys that do really cool fucking shit and you're like, okay, well I'll just use some of that, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> homie, you're real good at what you do. You, you don't have to go trying to buck everybody else's steez or whatever. That's uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Right. Yeah, for sure. All right. So you've got like this kind of alien head roughed out now. You're, are you, is this like preparing to seal it to the body? Yep. Yep. That's uh, getting it on there. And stylistically, you know, like I always will, like, I don't know if we missed it there. I might not have been paying attention, but um, I like will flatten the part and get it kind of an angle. So that when I pop that hole and I'm welding it to the body, it's not just like straight up and down. It'll kind of have like yeah. a little, yeah, you know, a little overhang, you know, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of stuff, um, you know, like a lot of times when you do things, uh, I don't want to say right, or like the piece just looks right a lot of the nuances and like the things that are important with the piece in general get overlooked. And there's a lot of times that just stuff as simple as that of like, you know, like, you know, sometimes I'll see, you know, pieces that are put together where the heads are just so straight on there, you know, and it's just like, you got to give it, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of, and, and it could be as simple as this. Like you can see, it's like, you know, so this where the teeth are going, like that's the bottom and you can see the head is like off at like, you know, like maybe like a 30 degree angle, you know, it's like, it's not quite, 45 it's not straight up and down you know it's like it's just it gives it just a little bit so when i weld it to it it kind of has more of a you know like a natural look hunk to it yeah you know it's where it just makes your piece not look as stiff i mean that's the hardest obviously thing to do with glass is like trying to make it look not a piece of glass like make it look stiff you know yeah, did you course. study like uh skulls and do like a study on like just like anatomy at all to kind of get an understanding of how to sculpt the bodies and the heads and how to place them and how to make it look a little better naturally you know uh the non-bullshit answer no <laughs> you know hey uh, hey the, yeah no <laughs> be honest bro we, um, we don't you know, we like the bullshit here but yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm like, uh, I'm always honest and I'm raw. Like 
something that I probably struggle the most with is like being the artist, I guess, of being like, oh, you know, like, you know, I did put time into it, obviously. Like, I spent time being like, well, but, but also like something I've always done that I think is important. And, um, you know, like, if you go back on my Instagram, like, I've left everything up from the minute I started a glass like Instagram to now. I've left it all up. So like, you know, the reason I know not to do it now is because if you go look, I'm guilty. I did it. You know, I welded that head on straight and was like, well, that doesn't look as good as it could. At the time, I thought it, you know, I was like, this is fucking cool. Like, look at me, look what I did, you know? And then you just, yeah. you gotta, you gotta have that bone in your body to always be trying to get better, you know? Yeah. And so I think that yeah. that's, what eventually ends up changing is like if I make some sort of design or I make a sculpture now it's different, but back in the day it was like, okay, that looks yeah, good. See how it's and, and it, forward. I love that. You got a little, yeah. twi- little movement in the body kind of hunched forward. Dude definitely smokes weed. Right. <laughs> and, and, it, and you got to have that. Cause it's all part of it's like character, you know, like to me, the yeah. invaders like the invaders were invented as like like i picture like to get on the artsy side of it um like i picture all of my sculptures as like i don't want to say like stop animation pieces but like you know like to me they're like little characters and like i'm like like the invaders Stuck were meant, yeah like the the invaders were invented for like the, they're called invaders because there's there's three categories of them there's invaders um there is um ambassadors and there's uh um emperors now the whole i like I, it took me a long time but the invaders are obviously the most ones you're gonna see you know those are the guys that like they come in that's why they're always holding stuff and they have little guns because like i picture them stealing opals stealing little millies and shit and all this <laughs> little stuff you know they're these little dudes they're like ah you know and they got little guns in case you fuck with them you know, I mean, they're they're the invaders. Yeah. You know, they're they're the, they're the guys that are dropped in. They're fucking stealing the resources of the glass shop, you know, and all that shit. Um, the ambassadors are the ones that come after the invaders, and they're supposed to be, you know, whatever the peacemakers. And so the ones that you'll see of those, which there's lots less of those, they have like flowing, like kind of robes, and they're more like, kind of like majestic, kind of like you know Jedi type shit to where they're like you know use their words. They don't have weapons they don't have things sometimes they they'll be, like, yeah they'll be bringing little things to you or whatever and then i've only made one emperor so far in the, like the six oh, years shit. of uh of of you know the invaders and the emperor was like big you know more elaborate uh that one i chose to do a collab with big z because it just like you know the the two styles of like, his star his like star you know opal tubing and stuff like it just looked good and like you know that one was like 10 inches tall like it was it was a big big one you know and so there was always this plan and that's what you'll see with me is like i'll make this shit and i have all these plans and then i just i forget about it like you know i created the sachiokos years ago like the fish that i make and i was all like hell bent on like this is i'm gonna these are great this is what i'm gonna make and then i forget about them and then i'm like oh shit like these are really cool like i need to make more of these (laughs) you know and (laughs) yeah uh, so I, I, I'm constantly kind of like, you know, envisioning things. and like the new kick I'm on, like for a long time, you know, I was making mean stuff. Like I made dragons and skulls and all this shit. So then I went on like a mindfulness uh, journey of pieces where I started making Buddhas <laughs> and like Ganeshas and like, you know, lots of meditating stuff and kind of more peaceful things. Uh, and then now I'm on to like silly. So I've been making like the llamas. And just Love like you know, stuff that I'm just, yeah, you know, that. just just goofy, just just goofy shit, you know, like that. that and I'm that's showing that to my kind of, girlfriend. She loved it too. Yeah, man. you know, it's like they're they're just silly. And to me, it's like I think that that's what I enjoy out of glass blowing, and I think a lot of people do. Is like you know, it's like you know, obviously smoking is not like a serious thing. I'm like, don't get me wrong, some of the art that's made is beautiful, but it's super serious too. Oh, yeah. You know, it's very geometrical yeah. and very like. You know, you're like, holy shit, mine. You like look at it. You're like, look at that fucking thing. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. you're like, that's silly. And uh, I like that. You know, like I like to like because uh, on the exterior, you know, I uh, if you just look at me, like I have a case of RBF, unfortunately, to where it's like, you know, you're like, oh, that dude doesn't look very happy. <laughs> this guy hates <laughs> you know? me. 
fuck? Yeah. I went to go say hi, and he he just scowled at me. And he's like, "Bitch, go yeah, away." And I was and, like, "Okay." Yeah, so <laughs> I I am guilty of that. Um, so my uh, that's cool. You know, I'm, I, you know, and like I said, I'm I'm an honest person. I'm very you know, because there's times where it's just like you know, there's time, especially if I'm if I'm working or competing ever gonna get uh you know i want to say my good side but like you know i'll literally like i'll I'll probably be competing and yeah i'll probably be competing in the masters this year at champs hell yeah um, and then uh i'll be doing this other thing this midwest meltdown that you you probably start seeing uh you know where it's it's a lot of big name artists but yeah you come up to me during those shows i'm I'm probably not going to talk to you very much you know just because i'm usually locked in uh, I'm very competitive, unfortunately, uh, which is that's not good, unfortunate. But... That's what drives innovation. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so I usually am kind of locked in, and, and you're not going to get the best uh, uh, talk out of me. Like I remember years ago, uh, actually, I think it was the year that I won the Masters because I've won once. Uh, I won in 2017. Let me check back nice. there. Okay. Um, and uh, they, there, it was a time when they were starting to try to do the, you know, whatever Discovery Channel, whatever channel they're trying to do. They're trying to shoot like a, a, a pilot for our community the, or whatever. The Operation Pipe Dreams. I don't even remember, <laughs> but like they mic'd me up, and I was in this position. It was like they, they did not like me at all because they were like, "Can you like?" <laughs> And I was like, no. Speak to the camera. No. You know, and it's like, and I won that competition. So, like, I was the guy that, like, they wanted to follow. But I was like, dude, no, I'm not doing that. And I was like, no, no. I'm like, now, can you leave me alone right now? That'd be fine. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, could, you, could you kindly fuck off, please? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. You know, and. Um, For respect. You know, that, 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 that's brutal, man. That's cool. Yeah, you got to be, man. Like, you you got to hyper focus, I imagine. Yeah, I've always been like that. You know, like if, if if there's one thing I'd say that I take pride in is uh I've been the same dude the whole time. You know, like whether you met me uh ten years ago, seventeen years ago, yesterday, like I've pretty much been the same dude. Um I I up. definitely I enjoy it. Uh, you know, nowadays that I'm older and, and um, you know, I got kids and things like that, you know, I probably don't partake in uh some of the the festivities and the shit that I probably should, you know, but I, you know, it's just like, you know, but I do generally. How old are your kids? Uh, they are six and one and a half. Okay, oh, just good. give it time, dude. They get a little more frustrating <laughs> as they get older. Yeah, I've, I've got 12, 10 and a six year old. Now I'll tell you, yeah, my course. mind has been bent so many times, dude. They're amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I love it. You know, it's one of those things, but it's uh, yeah, it's just, you know, they're just you, you just change i guess you know maybe not everybody does but you know it's like for me i'm just I, like you know I just you, got... you choose your moments i guess <laughs> yeah. yeah well because you know like, like you, you know you're saying like i gotta get up at four o'clock you know it's like you know it's like uh you know you're like well shit i gotta get up to get the kid ready for school or like you know i gotta do this you know and sometimes like you know when you know, like uh, when we were going to the DFO, uh my son's in kindergarten and you know and i think he had just started or first day or two or whatever and uh, i had to leave to go to oregon my flight left uh i think at like nine in the morning or no it was like no i think it was like 12 but my son went to school at like 7 30 or 8 and i worked till four in the morning the night before that that show and my son though was like dad you're still gonna take me to school right (coughs) and i'm like you know and you know, and it's like one of those things where it's like, it's not like a, you know, thing, but like, you know, as a dad, you're like, well, I told him I'd fucking take him to school. You know, like, I, you know, like I don't want to let him down. It's his first day of school or whatever. You know, it's like, yeah. So I came home at uh, four o'clock, you know, I fucking tried to go to bed and then, yeah, I woke up at eight and took my kid to school and then flew to fucking Portland, you know, like, and oh, rock and roll. Woo. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Some dad you like shit. Like, yeah, I respect it, buddy. Yeah, dude. Those moments you don't get we them feel back. That. I mean, like I said, my daughter is 21 now, and I can, you know, I can be that old dude saying that 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 classic, you know, cliche shit about how you got to enjoy these moments because that shit it all ends. I'm I'm taking your kids out the door, Mike. Yeah, yeah, your kids out the door, Mike. As you have a 21 year old child, like daughter, right? That's right. And exactly. Then, yeah, dude. 21. Like, so you are having those like experiences as a father, being like, "Shit, man, maybe I should have uh, smelled the roses a little more." 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not I'm saying try, I have I'm like trying to, like, <laughs> trying to listen to like you know a lot of people that have told me that you know and and uh you know and and I come from like a uh you know pretty like uh married remarried divorced family and stuff so I think you know with me and my wife being pretty solid and everything like that you know I'm really trying to like uh you know be the be there when I can be and it's like yeah it's something super simple like that but it's like you know the, what I'm getting at is it throws a wrench in like the 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 pipe maker lifestyle yeah like fuck oh, yeah. you know, so, you, know you can't always you know you can't always and that's what i've been struggling with i think the most out of anything is like trying to maintain like a a, a, a normal like nine to five schedule uh but still make money you know because sometimes it's like yeah if you break something or if you don't like something you got to rework it or like i you know i have a shop so like friends stop by other glass blowers stop by i get distracted or whatever and you're like shit you know there went three hours and you're like well i still need to get done when i need to get done and so trying to maintain a heavy workload and try to get home at a decent it's like i'm just that, that's the balance i have not figured out you know hey when you do let me know man well, i was about to <laughs> say <laughs> man like you're you're just <laughs> being <me> honest <laughs> you know it's, it's a hard thing to figure out and it sounds like you have your well, wait, priorities right like that's what's important you know like you got your family yeah. and your kids in mind and a lot of respect it, for that bro yeah, you got to like Thank that you, that, that uh, wife is lucky, man. You've mentioned her like eight hundred <laughs> times. Well, like, she's fucking dude. I I, yeah, I honestly I could, couldn't do it without I, her, bro. Like you know, it's one of those things where it's like I uh, we we still you know like she takes care of the kids, she stays home, and like she makes my life like super easy. So right. I like you know, I have to give her the, yeah. the props, man, because it's yeah. like I like I make the joke like you know I remember there was a glass blower that came into town and uh he was uh you know i was like yeah you can stay at the house or whatever and like he'd been on the road or something and he was like oh like uh you care if i do a load of laundry and i was like yeah but i'm gonna f- i don't know how to fucking work my own washing machine though right right yeah i feel like uh like next week we need to have like the counterpoint interview you know with hendy's wife or whatever yeah, <laughs> just play it man <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is that, you know, like, yeah, when she first, when we first got together, you know, we've been together for 12 years, I think married for seven or eight. Yeah. Um, she didn't know anything fucking about glass, you know, at first she was kind of like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know? And sure. I think over time she's like, she still like, uh, doesn't really care about it. Like she cares about the people that she's met. Like, you know, if, like if you come sure. to the show and she's met you and, yeah, you know the guys that I work with. She's like, oh, like, of course she like cares that they do well and everything like that. I mean, she has like a few favorite artists, uh, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, but that's something that I, for me personally, I kind of enjoy is like, you know, like when you know you, I do glass and everything like that. But like when I go home, it's like I kind of just I, I don't I tap out. You know, I don't really. Uh, I mean, she'll ask me like, obviously, how was my day? We'll talk about business right. and things like that. But you know, it's I like we're it. not sitting there being like. Did you see what fucking, you know, Eugene made Eugene or something? Like, you know, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the dab rigs out and start talking about the glass industry, baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Right. Yeah. We're, we're That's a good balance, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, it helps because yeah. You, get, you get sucked up in this shit. You really do. You know, it's like it's yeah. our whole lives. Like, I don't, I don't even have like a, the last like year or so I had to make a point. I'm like, I got to start like following things that like I like. Cause like my whole fucking feed is just, I mean, I like glass, but it's like, that's my whole Instagram. I, I made an Instagram because of glass. <laughs> you know, like if I didn't, I don't even know if I would have one. So then like I open my feed and it's just all business shit, whether it's smoke shops or collectors or people that I've followed over the years or other artists. And it's like, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, shit, like, you know, I, I like stuff too, like other than, you know, glass blowing, you know? So um, I think that's the struggle that I would assume most people in this industry have is that we're all kind of just um, consumed by it, you know, and, and that's why when we do have any sort of like uh, turmoil or ups and downs in the market, it's like you just feel like it's like, oh, God, because it's like it feels like it's all you see, you know, just like the yeah. news or anything yeah. like that. It's just like you open up your phone and it's <clears> just, you know, whatever, whether, you know, it's like if somebody's actually talking about it or you see that what's going on here or people selling this for that or this or that and you know it's like you know so she always sitting here like oh shit you know is it fucked are we all fucked or what, what's going on you know 
Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I got going into town, getting a real job, and you're like, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. well, well, I'm going to interject with some advice. Um Get a real job. It's cool. Yeah, Hendy, something you said, man. You said it's all you can see. And this takes me right back to like Melt 2016, where Micah Evans was there, you know, as a friend, man, collaborator. This is, he's the shit. And he's one of like, he's the best storyteller in the game. I mean, blatantly, but he's just like a wise dude because he's already been down these roads. And uh, he gave this really specific piece of advice. I've mentioned it over the years in the show. And he was trying to encourage uh, folks just getting into this uh, to, to not uh, get carried away with it, uh, to not forget about your other interests in life. And uh, he, he, th the analogy he used was like a horse with blinders. Because that mm -hmm. is what we do. Like this, this thing, like it, it almost demands that passion to, to get good at it. You know, like right out the gate. I get it. Like, but you know what he was telling all of us in this audience, uh, you know, was that like ten years of your life will fly right the fuck by without you even realizing it if you're just completely focused on glass. And, um, it, you know, it's almost counterintuitive advice, but, uh, you know, I, I'm here to, to document this shit in the highest form, but I'm not here to pretend that's all there is to life. Life is wildly wide and multifaceted, and, you know, you don't want to deny yourself other opportunities. And, you know, it's, we were talking about this earlier. Like, if, if you're that stressed, man, get take another job. Make some new friends there. Find out about some new paths. Like, things can happen that you don't even see coming if you just, you know, remain adaptable to change. And, you know, like, it, I'm not saying it's always fun, but sometimes the results of making these, you know, the big decisions can they can be more rewarding than you saw in the, in the first place. Yeah. I think the, you know, touching upon what you're saying there that, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, like, it's in some ways, uh, I'm going to see if this will switch over. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, buddy. Yes. We got you. Yeah. But, okay. Perfect. Um, in some ways, it's like, you know, it can be, you know, I think that's the weird What's thing that? about our industry is that, you know, it is, it can be a hobby. And so a lot of times when it's your hobby, it's like something that, you know, consumes you away from whatever job or uh, thing that you might have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I think the weird part about it is and why it can become so consuming if it's what you choose to do for a job, because it's like, it is it's just that that's the way it is you know it's yeah, just like yeah. you get into something you're like you can't this, you can't this is me focused on it all the time sure yeah right so like, this you is know. part of my you know whatever how i identify myself or whatever it may be you know i identify sure. like, <laughs> yeah like, I, I am a i am a glass blower you're like oh yeah because like i mean even now like you know like when i'm out in like public I don't even like, I don't even say that. Like my wife more, more often than not, you know, she'd be like, yeah. Oh yeah, he blows glass for a living. I'm like, shh, don't tell people. Like, I don't want to talk about it. Sure. <laughs> you know, cause I, it's never, uh, yeah. I can identify with that. Yeah. It's not a short conversation. Yeah. Not a short conversation and, you know, um, oftentimes in those situations, man, be it a concert or what, any type of social situation where I'm in a mixed crowd who doesn't know a fuck all about this. I'm hesitant to talk about it. Like, I feel like this is my chance to kind of get away from this all consuming thing that we do. And this it's could the last hour. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> I, I'm, like, yeah, I mean, there were like six months where it was like, yeah, I blow glass. You know what I mean? Like, I can't deny I like that. Twice. I'm yeah. 20, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm fucking made pipes. What do you want? A pipe with your name on it, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, and then re also really quickly, I realized that, like, if you talk to strangers about glass, like, a lot of it is, like, overly sexual. And I swear <laughs> to God, I had, I, I had this organic, normal 
conversation not being suggestive at all with this woman at a bar like way this is way back in the day when i first started and uh my friends who were at the next table over when i was done they were like dude you were killing us making all these sex jokes and shit and all that and i was just like homie i didn't do a single thing of that i was just having like a normal ass nice conversation with this homegirl you were talking about glory holes sir. i know i i, I it, it, that might have been all it took uh, like yeah but they're just hearing too many blows hey, quick, and... quick question hindi while we still have you and we're grateful for it yeah. but uh, someone someone uh, wanted to know about your tip on on yeah. uh, your Thank hand you, torch guy. you're using that's a gin tech right I, I do have, yeah, I, I prefer a Gentech, um, which would be, I guess, uh, maybe not what everybody else likes, but... Um, well, Gentech's like the, the shit. I yeah. I like, the, I like the... Yeah, I like them too. Yeah, same. Yeah, we, I, we... I, drop, I drop that torch. I mean, I have a little thing that, you know, hangs it up. I've had torch stands and stuff, but, it, like, it doesn't matter what I have. I've, I've dropped that thing. Yep. so many fucking times you know but it's like it still holds up and, and to be quite honest <laughs> and uh it's still a good torch i mean i, I probably five years ago i purchased uh one of uh, like a herbie version of it you know like it's not the bigger herbie hand torch but it's the uh the smaller like a smith gen tech style herbie and yep. uh oh, nice. it's just been sitting there you know i, I still use the gen tech yes. over yeah I, yeah I have like three of them <laughs> all right yeah, what, I, like the, what, I like the way you have the neck of it it's like you could almost just hang it on the bench just be like eh, hang it on the bench yeah all neck. right it's all now, good. but what tip is on it how many holes uh, so it's uh so at that particular time it was a seven all right. um now Word. i think flashy and then uh now though i have moved to a single port oh interesting uh, like a hornet a single port uh, it's another blast shield. Uh, blast oh, okay. shield originated in uh, AZ. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, I know it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like a, a random thing. I blew blast on the first uh, blast shield ever. Uh, indirectly. I just <laughs> she does great that info. I That's worked, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, the company that I worked for, uh, one of my bosses actually rented a house from Daryl. So like the guy Daryl who, you know, made uh, yeah, I know. Did, did Blast Shield, he did a lot of a lot of work with uh, you know, kind of Matt Bain was his name. Um, you know, that uh, uh you know, he would come in and so when Matt and Farmer started the, the shop, I used the Carlisle uh that they used like the, the like the prototype Blast Shield was on, you know, and so that was like the first Blast Shield that I ever used. Uh indirectly it was like one of the first ever made. Okay, we, ha yeah. we have a technical question. We've been, you know, honestly, I'm in love with this show already. Hendy, thank you so much for joining us. Kai, you've been the best co-host. This is exactly what I wanted to do right now. and um, But we have been light on the talk about exactly what's happening in the demo. So any questions, throw them in. We'll force them in. We I, I, I'm just loving this conversation, and this is exactly what this shit should be. So, um, but, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, we have a question from Bo Dutch Glass. When he cut yeah. the hand to make the palm, did he wipe the cut? I don't like my scissors because it leaves scuzz, but I just tried my first hand. Didn't think to make the palm like that. So do you wipe your cuts after you use a scissor, or...? Does he mean like with a punny rod? I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I didn't see scissors, I but so. I, I, I assume uh, he's asking I, I if think, he... I think it's you using it's your it seems like you're you're heating and nudging to move the the digits on the hand more than wiping. Um it seemed like you were kind of pushing it out with the cold side of the rod instead of the tip. What? Oh, as yeah. well. That's I'll, I'll do the, like I use my so funny part that we're on the hand torch uh, conversation. Now I use a single port that has a it's not it's like a it's not a tungsten but it's a stainless steel pick uh welded yeah. to it so it's Love my that torch shit. Now, and it has like a little pick on it and that's so like when i heat stuff like if i'm heating up a finger or like something like that i could uh, use that little pick just to tap it 
and kind of move it around and, and things like that without having to uh, get in there with like a rod or anything like that. Pick so, up a new tool. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's really it. neat. Uh, very and, good. Uh, so I can do a lot of that. Um, there are times where, like, I think, I, I don't know if this is what he was getting at or not, but, like, you know, yeah, when you cut something with, uh, you know, shears, uh, you know, there can be some sort of residue uh, or some shit or just even, you know, the color can get a little pissy. Um, there are times where I'll, like, if I make that cut, I'll heat it up and with a funny rod kind of, like, wipe off a little bit of that scuzz. Uh, sometimes I don't. So I didn't watch uh, that earlier, to be quite honest with you. Uh, so I'm not certain. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> but but it seems like you answered the question. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, that's a perfect answer to the question. That's exactly what I was about to just be the like, well, generally answer. speaking, if you cut with some shears, do you wipe the residue afterwards kind of thing? So, you know? Yeah, sometimes yes. Sometimes with the quality of your shears as well, though. Uh, oh, good know, point. Yep. You know, I, I'm a guy that like, you know, I don't use, I mean, I use a lot of tools. I use a lot of strange tools because I torch, uh, because I sculpt. Um, but shears are one of those ones where like you buy a good pair of shears, they're fucking worth it because like they last forever. I mean, I've had my shears for 10 years and they're still just crushing it. You know, like they cut smoothly. What's your preferred shear, man? Uh, what do you got? I don't, know the, what, I don't know what the fuck. Do you like the chopping shears? Shirt. They're the ones that I bought. I'd have to read the fucking thing. Uh, I bought them at the DFO like okay. 10 years ago. Uh, there was a guy there. They're the red handled shears. Um, you, I want to say it was something like. Oh, yeah. No, that's cutting edge. Is that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yep. it is. It's cutting, cutting edge. edge. So Those so are good. He's not like a, a Carlo Donna. I mean, he's not that expensive, but they're still yeah, expensive, no, but they're I, good. Made they're made. amazing shear. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, I think dude. it's the same Great quality part. metal. You can get it from uh, Jim Moore as well, and he's got a D2 steel. I'm not like a steel guy, like nor an economist or whatever. <laughs> like, but no, the, the D2 steel is like a model that he makes that's oriented towards burrow working. So I love the Jim Moore shears. The D2 metal is dank. The cutting edge ones I've, I've owned as well. Super quality. And the Carlo Dona, of course, is the tip top. So... Any yeah, of those, so I mean, you know, you know, it's sometimes, you know, sometimes you're not always like, oh, I, you know, you, you might not have it on your list to buy, you know, a two, three hundred dollar pair of fucking fancy scissors, but uh, it, it's good. You know, they, they work. Yep. And, and, and so right. and, and I'm a guy that like, you know, hey, the other ones will work, too. Uh, I had a pair of ten dollar fucking like gold handle eagle ones or some shit from ABR for a while, you know, and sometimes. Sourceful. Yeah, sometimes I'll use those anyways. Like if you're doing some stuff that like Ooh, love that. Know. Love that tink tink right there too. Uh, oh, oh shit. That, Sorry, you missed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm following I'm the a, video there for a minute, my bad. No, you're fine. I'm a, I'm driving, so I'm trying to keep my yeah, eyes on the road. Yeah, I caught that. on the road. I love yeah, it. my shop's forty minutes from my house now. I I moved uh oh, like wow. a year and a half ago. So yeah, I haven't moved oh, my shop yet. Damn, buddy. So, uh, Thanks for yeah, sticking no, around so long with us, man. Yeah, I appreciate, really appreciate you, man. That. This episode yeah. is tight as fuck because you're here with us. I I mean, Kai, I love you too, buddy, but seriously, yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you joining us, man. So the uh what what you said with the tink tink there, so you know, obviously I, I do a lot of cold sealing on uh yeah. a lot of my sculptures and stuff like that. So when I put those hands on there, um I will I'll just kinda, you know, uh put it on cold. And, uh, you know, there's some complications that can kind of happen from that. Cause like when you go to make the arm weld, uh, if you pull on it too much and you don't kind of finesse that weld, um, you can't just like rip your cold seal right off. And then the arm will be like, Bleh, and then like kind of could get you in a, a lame situation, but the better you get with it, uh, the cold sealing that is, and then honestly, just the finesse of making like a good weld initially. Um, and not having to move it around a lot, you know, and setting yourself up for the right positioning for that weld and blah, blah, blah. Um, I could get away with like kind of welding all my little attachments on with all these funny rods and this bridge system. And then, yeah, when I'm done doing the sculpture and the reason I do that is I'm trying to backfire this sculpture while I do it. So I don't want any of the shit that I've welded on. That's like the hands and the arms, like things that could, could move. 
I don't want them to move while I'm heating the, the, the sculpture up. So I keep them bridged till I'm done with it. And then I'll, you know, like you saw there, I'll eventually be like, okay, I'm done doing this sculpting up here and adding these things on. So I'll pop all those bridges off and then just fire polish where those cold seals were real quick while the piece is hot. Nice. Fuck yeah. Very methodical, dude. Really, thanks. Thanks for dialing that in for some people. I'm, I'm sure that was helpful for somebody out there. Yeah, dude, I this... or will or will be in the future, even you know. Oh uh, yeah. Well, so here's a perfect example. So one of those cold seals fell off in the kiln. You know, that's a foot right there. And so you know, there, there's always a balance. You know, it's like you don't want to put it on too heavy where it takes color with it. Uh, or, or takes a chunk out of it. So you got to put it on semi lightly, but sometimes that if it gets dinked or something ends up happening, it'll fall off. So, you know, right there, that must have fallen off either during travel or in the kiln or something like that. And uh, I had to reattach it because uh, it looks like I'm getting ready to put the, the feet on the bottom there. Yep. Yeah. Looks like I might have forgotten something on the face. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, like you're getting. It seems like you're getting down to the feet part with your backfire. Right, yeah, yeah. Got to kind of go right. around. You're very, very much working yourself back down to the handle. It's really neat to catch on to that after you explain that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, just kind of working down. You know, and sometimes you know when the sculpture is, you know, you start getting to a certain spot. You know, it's like uh, if you could focus on a uh, thermal zone. You know. Um, a lot of times I like say it's like if you are not actively heating something up, don't fucking heat it up. Like that's pretty much yeah. the best advice I, I can give you. Like if right. you're down there and you haven't been heating up the head, don't just all of a sudden be like, you know what? Maybe I should put some heat in that head. It's cold. It's like no motherfucker. That thing is cold. Right. Yeah, that thing's cold. Don't touch it. Um, and that kind of goes along the line of where like you were talking, you know, a while ago about you know, when you do a sculpture, can it bend cool? You know, yep. um, if it can bench cool, then you can get away with like kind of doing like this methodical, like working your way down because that head could kind of get colder. And then I'm just not going to like worry about it. I'm not going to put the heat into it. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, but then that's the whole jam is you got to stay away from it. So if you notice what I'm doing, torching down here on the bottom, my torch is always going as best as I can, like away from the piece. Uh, because you know it's critical to not get your torch in a in a situation where um sorry <laughs> it's two times now i've had cops drive by me and i'm like oh shit <laughs> uh, it's gonna be like exhibit a and hendy's I'm totally not on crash <laughs> yeah, I'm totally not on torch talk officers i swear yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not doing you, a though, man. you while I'm driving, I swear. Yeah, no, um, but this is exactly a critical, you know, moment to talk about that thermal stress thing because, yeah, like, These it's, it's, feet, it's, right? burl silicate is magic, but it's not, like, totally resilient, and, yeah, if you accidentally catch it with a little bit wisp of that hand torch when it's cooled, kind of, you know, the, the way, the way that I think about it is, like, gradients. <laughs> And like, like almost like a line graph. And if all of a sudden that graph goes from 400 to nine or 1200 past the stress zone at like 850 or so, you know what I mean? Like exactly. you're, you're it's forcing it. Yeah. You're forcing it too quickly through that transitional zone. Whereas if it gently came up to it, it wouldn't give a fuck. So you really right. got to be a, thinking. A... Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I'm sorry. Um, on a like, uh, and and I'm not always good with the chemistry of the glass, but this is something I, I do I guess think about is uh, like you were saying, you know, it could be looked at as a graph, but you could also think of it as like, you know, the reason glass moves is when it gets heated up, the, the molecules start to move much more rapidly, and as it's to cool down, they start to slow, and so they're not ready. You know, you can't make them just jump. For, for lack yep. of better words, they have to just like when you are doing a, a coil pot or something like that, you know, you're heating it up and obviously it has to take a certain amount of heat for it to become uh, molten, you know, and then it is pretty much doing its thing or whatever. And then likewise, it calms back down. The sculpture is the same type of thing. If your molecules and your heat base has been taken away from that head, 
you can't just start heating it up again uh, with too hot of a flame. Yeah. Uh, or it's just going to, yeah, those, those molecules will excite too quickly and then you're going to have a problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it reminds me of I, uh, Param. Um, par- I'm sorry. Were you, I, go ahead, buddy. I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought you were done. I, okay. I think I'm done. Yeah, I could keep going. I'm sure, but I'm good. Oh yeah, oh, it was just, it, it shit was making me laugh because uh, the way Roger uh, Paramore oh, to take it back to him, he described it as like this molecular dance party, where exactly, the yeah. like the the vibe is like moving through the layers. They ain't even heard the music yet in the middle, you know. Right. Like you can't expect yeah. them to. Ju- they're still wallflowers. You can't just force right. them onto the dance floor kind of thing yeah. and uh yeah it's funny how similar your analogies and his are just slightly different versions of them i love it right you know that's that's it you know it's like you have to find some sort of uh way that it makes sense in your brain you know whatever that yeah, may be I, yeah and, for sure uh, and, and i think all of us obviously think different but what i've always told people is you can't you know fucking do the same thing over and over again and just you know expect different results you know and i think that's right. a lot of what it is too is like you know you can't be like oh this needs heat and so you just do it and then it cracks and then you continue to do things like that again sure. you got to realize like well what the fuck did i just do there because i mean there's there's times where if i needed to um like i work on a herbert arnold and um i typically work with uh compressed air uh in this particular demo i don't have any compressed air uh which isn't a huge deal um it just changes uh, a couple of things as far as like what flames I'm going to use. Uh, yeah. But like if I'm at home, uh, if I need to like, if like sometimes I'm just making a sculpture that like it does have to stay hot the whole time. And sometimes mm-hmm. like I might've put something on and it just didn't go uh, as smoothly as I wanted. So like uh, my face dropped maybe a little slower, I think than uh, what I would like. And so therefore I got to step down my backfire flame and i'm sure i've done that a couple of times in this demo to where like you'll see that sometimes yeah. i'll go in with not a full flame but i go in with a much more aggressive flame and i'll do the heat face and things like that but if it's been a while uh, i have to back off and kind of uh let a less aggressive which would be a lower temperature right like a semi annealing flame. flame uh get there and that's what we're just talking, we're just talking about is that i'm trying not to I'm trying to bridge the gap. You know, I don't want yeah. to go like this needs heat, but I'm like, shit, it might've got a little too cold. Like it's still kind of warm, but it's not warm enough because it is a complex sculpture that if I go right to it in this larger aggressive flame, I could run into a problem. So let me go here first, then go there and then get back to there. You know, yeah. do you, uh, do you use like the additional valve that like generates like a genuine annealing flame when you're at home that utilizes the compressed air? Yeah. I, I, I use like all sorts of different ones. It really okay. just kind of depends, like, you know, cause like, uh, it, you know, generally I'm using like a little bit more aggressive than like a Bunsen flame, you know, is what a lot of it is. Yeah. But a lot of yeah. times for my, my is work, that balls on this uh, alien? Like, what is, what is that on the back? <laughs> is, he, is, he, is he sitting on his nuts? Like, those are, those are the probably the one thing that I'd say I, I don't love about the aliens. But, like, for me, uh, form and function are definitely important. And I'm always going to lean towards function over form. Although I do make very complex sculptures. So, those little back nubs right there are so that it stands stout. Yeah. So I have okay. gone, so... I've, I've flattened the front shoes uh, pretty mm-hmm. flat, uh, but there's still just a, like if you were to look at the ellipse of the belly, the shoes are sticking down just a little lower than that ellipse. Uh, so I'll put these little nubs on the very back to create that four points of contact. So like that little fucker, if you slapped him, He's not going to fall over. He'll scoot. He's nice and know? stable. Hell yeah. Very stabilizing. I like it. Well, it kind of looks like he's sitting on his nuts, which, you know, it's yeah, just kind it's of like one of those things I'm you try gonna, not to do. Yeah. It is the stabilizing so, nuts for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, great. Well, that's great. I'm sure that's a little more info than most people needed as well. <laughs> I mean, they never really show the back of those gray aliens. Maybe they just have big old, like, little round booties that allow yeah, them to sit this way. Baboon butts. Yeah, like, this uh, is just natural anatomy of the, like, the gray traditional alien, right? As we're seeing here, kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like when he rained the marsh, you know, he's got some big <laughs> cancer problems, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and what are we making here? This is the joint, is uh, that right? That's the that's the joint, yeah. yeah so uh, yeah. most cool. of my rigs most the of my sculpture mil. rigs now are, are gonna be uh doers, you know, so it's a handmade doer. And so I've already done the joint there and I'm cold sealed to the the part that I'm gonna seal in. Okay, that was, uh, this is exactly what caught me. I was like, hold on, we cold yeah, seal into the joint here? Is my man dangerous? Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's. I mean, for this, I don't, I'm sure there's other ways you could do it. But for me, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to form that joint. <laughs> just kind of, kind of would, uh, you, I'm going to form that joint like you would if you're doing any kind of joint. But uh, the, the top portion there is just going to be thinner because it's going to be sealed in rather than like, you know, have a rim because it's a external yeah, joint. Um, and then, so when you cold seal to that, yeah, this is one of those ones where it's like, you, you gotta, you gotta get it in at the, the right temperature. Cause too cold, it's just going to fall off constantly, uh, which is a pain in the ass. And then too hot, you go take that thing off and just take the whole fucking thing with it. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. so Even it's the definitely chip's a bad. delicate little thing, but, um, I don't reason that I'm doing this and, and you know, there's what do they say, there's like, you know, fucking a dozen way to skin a cat or whatever but yeah. um for me when i when i Never get done doing this, this i'm gonna i'm gonna size it uh you know and then i'm gonna stuff it in there like, okay this is the right size it's, it's at the angle that i want uh and then i'm gonna break i'm gonna pop my holes and then i'm gonna uh, break that cold seal off and then i'm gonna literally put a piece of little like fiber blanket in that hole or actually shit i don't even do that anymore uh, i just seal it in open uh, it has just enough, like, if you put, like, you'll see that I'll probably do it at one point or another here, where, like, I'm going to heat it up after I've made that tight little seal. Because I like to make the, the doer lip pretty much the just fit in the inside lip of the hole that I welt that I made um, for the rig. Yep. When I yep. go there, I'm just making the tiny little seal uh, nice and hot around that edge, and then I'll go and cook it all in and kind of, like, flow into it but it's like it has just enough air pressure uh normally like you know like to where i go and it'll kind of it's like a light pop because it's actually blowing you know it's not plugged so it's like it on and in a weird way it's like the perfect amount of pressure for me to get like my wall thickness to to get to where i kind of want um so it's like yeah kind of different but um you could put just like a piece of uh fiber blanket in or you know things like that and you can kind of plug that hole um and, and then that way you have more air pressure if that's like your uh your cup of tea i guess uh but for me it's like yeah i just uh, right here so I'm, I'm, I'm sizing the hole uh so i guess I'm yeah, a little ahead yeah. of uh, what we were just talking about so right here i'm just sizing the hole um you know i have that guy on the uh thing so i assume at one point i'm gonna you know probably either by the the kiln or something like that i'm going to you know check to make sure that the hole i just flared open is in the parameters of like yeah so here i'm doing my little hole pops uh now i do like a two hole and then i'm gonna uh uh like web it to where i make three holes out of one hole so technically it's a six hole um oh word will you just draw a string down through the middle of it yeah or i do three little like nubs and then connect it in the center um, so I make cool. three holes out of the, the Two. one. And then, uh, basically, I, I, uh, well, basically, um, sorry, what was I thinking there? Um, don't get pulled you know, over. Just make sure that those are, <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the reason I do that now, I used to do, uh, you know, originally when we first started doing it, it was two holes, and then uh, and then I started doing three holes, and uh, I would, like, this piece in particular, too, like, I'll always make, like, a good explosion chamber, like a belly or something like that, uh, but what I realized is that, you know, I'll have 
points of like where I connect the head, you know, it's like that well is, you know, maybe uh, 14 to 16 millimeters, uh, you know, so it's like that, that's a, a bottleneck of the piece, you know, and so you have this big old head, but like if water from the bottom chamber decides to make its way up into that little neck well, it'll pop. So like if the bubble pops and it goes to that little well, it's bottled up enough to where you could actually almost for what I started to do in a lot of my pieces, because it seems to move the water more appropriately is that I've kind of chopped the bubble pattern. Uh, so instead of having like uh, more of like, uh, you know, get goofy with the sounds because we'll, it's like the best way to describe it. Instead of it being like, blah, 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 you know, we're getting, -da 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 -da. you know, it's like, it's more flutter, yeah. more like, you know, like my rigs, they'll flutter a little bit more and that makes the bubbles smaller. And so they don't like have as much opportunity to move around the chamber and like get into weird spots. Word. That's a cool, cool yeah. idea. <laughs> a neat way to break up, break it up. Kind of like a little frit disc, it's just little tiny bubbles. Love it. Yeah, this right. is uh, super critical. Kind of. You know, it's like it, 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 and when you, when, if you ever hit, oh, I get it, because you'll feel how it moves in there, you know, and it's not really restricted. At first, when I did it, uh, you know, I was worried that, you know, that maybe that, like, they would get clogged or something like that, because the whole, the, each little hole, even though there's six of them, they're they're about the size of like a medium tungsten, you know. So it's like it's like a little yeah, bigger than a, picking it out. the size of like a bull, you know, like yeah, like a little bull pick, you know, or something like that. Like yeah. a, to, to like you know, clean out your bull. And um, they they never seem to really get clogged. I mean, and, and, and you know, in all honesty, it's like you know, you're gonna be smoking out of you know, two thousand dollar pieces or whatever it is. I mean, you're gonna clean your piece relatively often, anyhow. But um, well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but often that's I the like, intention you know, look, yeah, i get terrible you know i'd say glass blowers we're probably the worst you know out of all of everybody so because we're like yeah. you know i'm all on the i like i spoke out of something and i'll be like all right i guess it's just time to fuck oh no yeah dude. Way, i'm just gonna uh, get something new here <laughs> you know, you place it in the joint, but yeah, you're, the you're thing working thing. it like a tire. It's like a star pattern. You're like going across from one end to the other, and it's doing it all even. And you, you have to uh, you tack it in because, like, you know, I gotta remind remind me that you know we gotta keep heat to it. So it's like I'll go in and I'll yeah. kind of you know like I'm using my torch to kind of like heat and tap, heat and tap, so that way I can put heat to it and it won't just fall out. You know what I mean? And it, so, it looks kind of like uh, a quartz worker as they do it too. Right. And so I'm just making like, you know, uh, getting it close. Like you want everything to be nice and close because I'm just going to go in with a, like, you know, you see that flame is very fine. Uh, I'm going to go and mm -hmm. just, when you just nice that little seal, like right where those two parts are coming together, I mean, it just flows right together. You know, it just does a nice little Beautiful. bead, you know, and you do have to go back and, you know, kind of uh, rework the outer part of that. So like you can uh, not have like a super sharp angle where the two meet. Um, but yeah. the initial seal is very quick, you know, about, um, one half will get done in about another five seconds, you know, uh, and then the rest of the time is just taken. Like I'm doing that, I think should be at, at right here. So it's like, you don't know, see, like I did about half of it. I gave it a little puff yeah. and then I'll go back and do probably the other half, give it a little puff, um, you know, and, uh, that's pretty much that, um, just cleaning it up. There's definitely a lot of complications, you know, like, you know, like, uh, you know, that can happen. So it's like, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, you know, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Like at this point, if you need to have full air, air pressure, you know, stick that fucking uh, piece of fire. Get in there. So the fire really won't light on fire. Or, uh, maybe. Well, yeah. But, <clears throat> uh, you know, plug that hole and not catch on fire and shit. And then, uh, or, you know, you could use a joint. Uh, some guys will do that. You know, you'll have like a ground, you know, joint there and kind of have it bridged. Uh, you can go along that route. Uh, sometimes I'll get a little happy and like, you know, I'll fucking, you know, be rocking that bitch. And if I put a joint in there, I don't, I don't want to like accidentally like melt it in there or get it stuck or some shit. So I choose not yeah. to because it just helps me. Oh, it helps there. me like turn down Stuff my a foil ball in there. focus. I guess the heat. 
Yep. You know, um, but obviously, you know, a joint seal is an important part and you got to make sure that you do those, you know, as, as clean as you can. And uh, when you do these sculptures and shit like that, uh, it's hard to get them in some of these spots. You know, it's like it's not your, you know, a lot of times it's not the most traditional spot to be throwing them in. So you got to kind of, you know, these pieces were designed like why the the body kind of has a jelly bean shape is because, you know, I want the bottom belly to have uh, spots for, you know, a nice expansion for the bubbles and for smoke separation from the water. But also the top, I bend forward a little bit so that I can set up a spot to try to get at a 45 ish degree angle to get that down step in there. So, you know, that that's obviously predetermined, you know, if you're, if you're designing a rig, you know, and, and we're trying to get for something that's a functional sculpture, it's like, you got to keep that in mind, you know, just that subtle bend of the back and then welding the head at that slight angle forward with the little collar leaves me yeah. that little back part right there to be able to get that in there at a 45 degree angle. Cause Honestly, the bend of the belly, where the belly kind of comes in, that stem is just barely missing that. And if I'm off on some of those angles, it won't get into the spot that it needs to because it'll hit the the front part of like where the belly creases in there. So it's it's a tight little window. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 you have to set that up prior, obviously, you know, way many steps ago, you know, when you're shaping the body. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely something sure. to keep in mind as you go through the whole process. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question, buddy. Um, yeah. Do you ever use a blow tube? You seem super comfortable doing this kind of. This is the type of seal that I would like. I'd freak out if I didn't have a blow tube on hand. Are you just completely adapted to working without it? Do you ever use them? Yeah, he's been uh, using it in this demo. Yeah, the blow. He's the had blow a rubber hose. hose. Yeah. Yeah, like, you uh, have. I, I'm sorry, I'm. You, that's yeah, actually he had a sweet true. swivel on it too, man. Okay, that's actually true, and I remember asking him about that fucking swivel at the time. All right, this is my bad. <laughs> but uh, what? It's all good. right, in that case, hold on. We're all still still valid though. Like, what made you lose the blow tube before doing this type of complicated seal? So, like I was saying, uh, oddly enough, so I, when I first started doing it, I had uh, the piece of fiber blanket in there plugged. Uh, so I felt that I had good air pressure and I would use a blow hose. And then I just like started realizing that like I um, sometimes you can either, you know, I don't, you know, you I, like sometimes I felt like I would over pump. Uh, yep. Sometimes like when you're a little stony baloney uh, and you fucking mm -hmm. like you don't realize like I have allergies. And so, like, because uh, I live in the fucking desert and there's dirt everywhere, um, <laughs> you don't fucking realize that your mouth is shut, dude. And so, like, you're doing this complex weld or you're doing some shit, and then you're like, oh, no, like, you fucking, and you touch right. it. You know, the, the wall where, where I'm making that weld and the stem, there is yeah. an angle there. So, like, if I heat it up too quickly, like, you guys have probably seen when you do, like, you know, like the direct to jack seals or whatever, a Maria type of seal, yeah. you can weld. The, the outer wall to the down stem on accident a little bit if you overheat sure. it of course so that's 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 uh you know when you're making a two thousand dollar piece that's that's not good you can't do that <laughs> you know so you got to try right. to get that seal as nice right. as possible so and, like uh, ultimately man you like you like having it open there and, and only applying air pressure at by your choice is that like that's well, fair to well, say so, like, you have, yeah so you have the whole so like there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of like pushback. So when I blow through it, obviously it's coming out the the joint, you know, because there is, there's there's nothing plugging it. But because it's got to go through the piece and like make it through the holes, there's like a little bit of like pressure. So like when I go, it's like it's just a, it like puts just enough pressure to where it's like a nice light little puff. And it's not like that's the, I don't that's just like a for me thing. All right, I love uh, it. Um, so, it's all good. You, know, no, no, you, it's, can try, you can try it out. Yeah, you know. But yeah. Say it, like, oh, no, this but, is the way to do it, bro. <laughs> I, I get what you're getting at, though, because the slightest differences of pressure at that moment can really make that seal weird, and you're just yeah. eliminating yeah. one factor, and and like you're forcing yourself to deal with another more explicitly, 
But I get, you know what I mean? Like that that's probably on balance the safer choice, right? Like you'd yeah, rather have total control yeah. over the positive pressure versus having weirdness in the negative pressure. Exactly. You know, like I said, I've closed my mouth a couple of two times on accident or I've like popped the hole. Cause like, that's the other thing too, is you could be heating that seal up and forget that your mouth is closed. And then all of a sudden, oh, instead man. of making the well, as you pop a hole, you're like, ah, shit, you know? Yeah. And when it's a sculpture like that, like my, my time is limited in that seal right there. And I like to do them at the end because I don't like to be working on sculptures and worrying about a joint seal. But most of the time, <sighs> the people I work with are like, dude, you're doing this at the end. I'm like, yeah, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like we, we just had a comment and said, he goes, he goes, wow, I can't believe he just went for the cold seal like that. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's like danger is my middle name kind of situation. Yeah. But you know, once you've done it a bunch what of times, what is your middle you... name? Kai's trying to, like, identity theft you. No, no, man. I don't need your social. I just, what's your middle name, dog? Me or him? Just get personal, homie. Yeah, no, I mean. Uh, Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, Uh, that was just true. I was just trying to tell you. (laughs) My first name is is Sean. So, you know, that's my real name. Sean uh, Henderson. That's where Hendy comes from. My last name's Henderson. All day. And uh, my middle name is Paul. So I'm actually Sean Paul. So don't, you know, don't fuck with me, dude. You know, (laughs) (laughs) thank you for that, man. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was going like all wrong. And then it went all right. I was like, I'm good at that. I'm good at that. My boy pulled it out at the end. I love that shit. Hell yeah. Homie. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, dude. Um, really great. I, I'm. I was telling the chat a second ago. I was like, "Yo, this is this is exactly what I wanted to do." Um, having the artist with us, having a friend with us, and having like a genuinely dank conversation, and getting you know, it 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 feels like the same conversation we'd had if we were just all chilling at a table at the, you know the bar after a trade show. You know, absolutely. That... No, and that's, um, I appreciate you, uh, you know, putting things on uh, for the community like this. Thank you, man. And uh, I mean, I can't, I can't see anybody's uh, <laughs> comments or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I'm always a guy that, you know, I, I try my best. You know, like I am a, uh, an individual, obviously. Uh, you know, and, and just like we were talking earlier, of a dad, blah blah blah. Like literally yeah, just man. pulled into my dad's way. Um, you know, but <laughs> perfect I'm, timing. I'm, 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 yeah, I know, right? I try to talk to, uh, I try to respond to messages and all that stuff, but I'm always an in-person type of guy, you know. Hell like, yeah. you know, see me at a show, uh, we can get to do something like this. This is what I prefer. Um, I, I try it. to Hell talk yeah. on M's and everything like that, but sometimes I feel bad that I'm not like, you know, having good, genuine conversations over DM, you know, with people, you know. But if you ever come to like, sure. if I do a drop in a shop or you catch me at a demo or something. I mean, this is the guy you're going to get. I'll talk your fucking ear off. Uh, I generally like to educate people and, and let them know. I ain't got no secrets. What I do is fucking hard. So I don't really, I don't hide it. I'm like, you know, right. I'm like, hey, like, here's, here's the, here's the way. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, got to do all the, the years of work to be able to even apply these techniques. Of course. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, well, absolutely. Fun, um, you, you made it look effortless, man. You yeah. really did. You know, there's Mike something I wanted to add. Too, uh, it's something that came up earlier, and I had a thought on it, and I just didn't want to interrupt. But I, I wanted to speak to what you were mentioning, and it's something I've learned because, you know, this is my thing, you know, documenting what we do. Champs is actually, you know, I hate to mix up shows. You know, we're doing a Las Vegas demo, but y- y'all know I covered Champs, and... I don't like to cross the streams, Never but um, especially in a situation like that where homies are in a competition, like a lot of money's on the line. You've put a lot of thought into what you're trying to do. Um, I I've I've learned that um, there you know there's moments where you approach somebody and it's just not time to talk. And I've learned that you approach somebody and it's just not time to film. 
and <laughs> I've sincerely tried to, yeah. to do my best to be respectful about that, and um, it just means the world when folks even allow me to put that camera on this heat like we just shared. Uh, homie, seriously, thank you so much for letting us have this special time together and share something. I, I sincerely think people are going to be watching this demo for a long time because you've, you've, we really got into some like dank stuff about technique, but it was just a blast to talk with you, dude. I'm so happy you joined us. You really made this a special show. Thank you so much. Well, thank um, you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Um, I, <laughs> I did want to add one thing to this. God forbid somebody makes it to the end. Um, yeah, what what is what is the absolute best way to contact you to buy your work? Because I was joking about it in the Torch Talk post when I shared the show. You are like the most scammed on dude in the community. Oh, what the like, fuck, bro? That's I know. I know. You get a lot of scam accounts. I was just, <laughs> I mean, I, I was riffing on it just like, it's because your work's so goddamn good. It You know, you're... Your pieces are just all sculpturally, like visually evocative. I get it. I I get it. If I were some scammer in Indonesia trying to do this thing, I'd be like, who that Hindi guy? Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. Fucking... <laughs> I get it. Uh, you know, I people just people like aliens. I just wanted to mention this shit. Like, like, what's the what's the best way to talk to you about your work? Like, it's your Instagram or like, like it just is, like. It's like... You know, because it's going to be, you know, Hendy Glass. I mean, like, you always got to be, you know, like, my, my Instagram, you know, you got, you know, you got to check the followers and all that right. shit. Uh, you know, you got to make underscores, sure. Underscores, you... weird shit, anything. Yeah. It, hey, what I will, official, right? What, what I, yeah, what I will say is that, like, what I always tell people is, like, and, and it's, and, I, and this is not to be meant as rude, but, like, I'm normally not going to reach out to you. So, right. if you have anybody right. reaching out to you, <laughs> and he's probably like if he's like hey you just won this option so you, know, you, this or whatever, right. you know that, you know i always leave it at like you have to contact me and so For that sure. makes it to where like you're gonna hit up the right person you know what i mean because i'm not yeah right. don't drop the ball yeah you're not you're not gonna get duped on it if you feel weird about it you, there is i think on my website uh that's a link in my you know instagram bio but um, you know, you can, uh, I think you can contact me via email. Um, Word. if, if, you know, and, and, uh, I, I usually will see that, but you know, right. yeah, usually Instagram is the best way, uh, to, to get a hold of me. I'm working on setting up the Facebook side of it. Like Facebook, I never was like, Oh, I'm going to sell glass on sure, Facebook. Yeah. And I think that's where, right. that's where the, yeah, it's the, left you like uh, open season. Yeah. They're like, he's not on here. Hey. But people expect him to be, so maybe it's an easy way to catch people no, who aren't technically savvy. What I've told tons of big name glass blowers now, and I'm like, hey, if you don't have a fucking Facebook page, get one because like it's relevant, dude. I've got like 160k on my Facebook page, and it's fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it's like I didn't have any, so when they when a Hendy Glass came up, everybody just assumed that that was me, you know, because he was stealing all my pictures. Like he had pictures right. of me or. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. they knows. came out. When my kids they came out. When my kids oh. were, like, yeah, that's they, up, you know, like yeah, they like, very personal that. shit. Yeah, they're smart about it. Like they, yeah, if they, I ever found, oh, that's fucking good. If I ever found a guy that was like a hacker and he could find out who that guy was, trust me, I would love to know who the fuck that was. Right. Because like, right, all right, twenty people watching. That's been yeah. put yeah, out. Okay, guys got more personal like scamming scamming but like dude don't and that's why like now what, what i kind of struggle with and that, my this, pictures. yeah this is first world shit but that's why you'll see like dude i don't share anything personal on my page period because mm -hmm. i fucking can't and it's stupid you know like yeah. i can't even let people know like who the fuck i am because those scammers will take that information and they'll use it against me to scam you or whatever you know like because they'll, right. they'll just it's sad, you know, man. And so, like, That's a shame. It's, it's stupid, and I've always kind of battled with that. That like I leave my personal life out of a lot of my Instagram shit, which 
you could argue the fact that a lot of people like to know who they're supporting. Or yeah, what they're supporting. I was it's part of building an audience. It kind of is. It's, so it's, it's, story. Been, it's been a catch-22 for me for a couple of years because as obviously I've become more popular and, and people want to know, well, who the fuck is Handy Glass? Like, I see the work, but who is the guy? Like, you know, what, what, right. who am I... Who am I spending money with? Like, what am I, you know, what am I getting into? Not that some people don't give a shit. They're like, I like does, does this guy like Nazis or something? I mean, yeah. what is he all about? Like, so, you, you know, know like, like, yeah, we get it. Yeah, and so, but what it's really kind of come down to is like, yeah, it's like my wife. Double so watermark kind of, everything. All my water, all my wife's accounts, like, I've had to go private because, like, they stole shit. Like, dude, one of these guys put on his story like my wife posts that she like it, in our own personal it follows shit, like, your not, wife that's fucked up yeah, yeah she was Dude. pissed and she was fucking Dude. like and rightfully so she went out to lunch with my son and just posted on her story like all of us do like oh out to lunch with my little boy and right. this motherfucker it's posted fuck. on his fucking and i was like dude this is like this is it i'm over this shit you know yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to bring up something negative, dude, but at the uh, same okay. token, yeah. like, like I don't know if you know this, homie, but, like, I actually started a group to combat this, like, months ago. I let a homie run it, so I can't really take too much credit here, man. My boy's <laughs> doing all the work, man. Shout-outs to the homie. But, like, uh, it's called Glass Scam Busters, and it's nah. basically dedicated to uh, dealing with accounts just like these people fucking with you, uh, who Dude, are. Dude, Belmont gets it so bad too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, we're doing the best we can, man. I, I, I saw what was happening with you and others. I remember I even messaged you one time, like, "God, this isn't you, right?" You know, kind of yeah. thing. And Why that. One of them, it was like, yeah, I went to a show and like, you know, artists that I haven't talked to in a while, whatever, like, oh, congratulations, man. Like, cause the like, guy posted up that, like, you know, w like when I had a baby, I, I posted that on my page and like, oh, like, you know, welcome to the world, our little baby. And, yeah. and so people were like, oh, like, congratulations on your baby being born. I was like, yeah, dude, I was a fucking scammer. My son's like four. <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, that's. Yeah, no, this thing is bullshit. Homies, if like my dog's out there yeah, watching. Yeah, point out scammers to your friends. Yeah, like, the, the Glass Scam Busters group so is there. And um, honestly, that group has picked up steam, man. I mean, it's not the craziest yeah. thing yet, but I don't know. Let me tell you where it's at right now. It will be in um, 2027. <laughs> All right, hold on. I, just, I, I mean, I, 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 I it, it is what it is, dude. But like, I'm telling you, I'm so proud the fact that it has this many fucking people. Uh, where's the goddamn member account? Um, <laughs> like, most of me members and shit. Whatever. In any event, uh, all right, hold on. People. All right, it's under this people thing. There's currently 867 people in this group. And uh, I know it's not torch That's talk, okay. you know, like 20,000 plus, but we just started it. And homies, if you're out there, please join. Like the point of this group is to like kind of mass report fake accounts and just add <laughs> awareness to it to where hopefully. Wow. In, yeah. In, a, in, you know, in six <laughs> months or in a year or three. Hopefully, you could just pop into this group and search a glass artist's name and see if there's scammer accounts. And, you know, the technical savvy cats out there, I get it. You don't need to do that. Some of it's very obvious. But not all of us, like, grew up with, you know, with computers and the internet. And Get like, off my lawn. Like, so this group is to, like, help those people. You know, like, if you know you're not good at this shit, it's okay. You're not everybody's got to be fucking Google certified or whatever. But, like, um, this group will... It's already at the point where it's, like, a de facto resource for searching a name and finding out if there's scam accounts related to it. And uh, in time, like, try, like, like I said, we're nearly... The Torch Talk group was like one to two thousand very slowly, and then once people got there, it, 
Now we're at twenty three thousand, and it's yeah, it's a lot to deal with, frankly. But whatever. Um, these, <laughs> these these things grow quickly when people actually recognize the value. Use and it as a resource. Yeah, this exactly. is one of those ones, man. And yeah, dude, I don't. I hate to bring up something negative. It like especially so to much, hear. Sean. I didn't even know they were fucking with your family this hard. But, like, it makes me feel even more galvanized, you know, about this. Like, what the fuck, dude? This is crazy. That's Some Christmas place. lights, dude. <laughs> like, we have, to, we have to do something. So, th this, uh, it's called the Glass Scam Busters Group. I'll pop it up for you guys up here just so y'all can see it. I'm using total trickery to, like, fake my way into this, um, webcam situation. Where's the goddamn full screen thing? Whatever, I know right, the key. Well, I'm gonna for run it. though. I appreciate you guys, but Dude, uh, I gotta use oh, yeah, you're you're and, good, um, homie. Thank yeah. you again for putting it on. No stress, thank man. You, oh, homie, thank you so much for joining us. All right, you guys have a have good a night. night dude. You appreciate too. you, buddy. Much love. All right, my dogs. What a goddamn wow. show. Um. I did want to show y'all real quickly this Glass Scam Busters group. Uh, this ain't no joke. Uh, we're doing it. Um, Fuck scammers. Yeah. Let's see if I can hide this thing. Wow, this is super fancy screen work here, Mike. I also wanted to, uh, to say, dude, that was some really good uh, editing. Uh, Thank question you, I wanted to ask was about like how much uh, kiln breaking he did in between edits and how much of that you had to pull out of it. All right, I'll speak to that shit. Um, in the editing process, I tried to um, I'll cut out a bit of that, but I try to make it obvious when they used like an annealing flame, and yeah, try like to make it obvious like via cuts where it came out of the kiln like i'll try to show yeah, them like, like approaching around right yeah. like I'll, I'll try to like save a like a moment of them approaching the thing or whatever just so that like if you're truly watching this documentary footage to learn like if you're paying attention to the cues you can see that um if i were to leave in Every bit of those moments, we just extend the demos so much. But yeah, he, I, how I, long was that set he did? What did he, he say? He got about so seven hours, two to three that? hours, and we took it down to what, like an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah, that was minus that was the awesome. Yeah, minus the awesome conversation beforehand. So, um, yeah. Uh, and regardless, let me see if I can pop this down and we can both be up. I don't really know. Like, I'm like hogging the scene. See well, I, I mean, I, I we gotta gotta wrap this up, dude. But I definitely want to do this again with you, Mike, here soon. If we can do it again, maybe in another couple yeah. weeks or a month. That'd be if great, you got buddy. something on deck. Yeah, no. I love um, doing this, man. Love yeah, talking no, to these cats. Oh, I'd love to have you with me, buddy. Um. And you did an amazing job kind of helping keep the conversation going. And yeah, no, it's super dope having you. Um, let's do this. You know, I, I'm i currently in the process of It's hard editing. to commit to. I feel it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently editing a couple of specials that are... They're specials because they're fucking special to me. They're about amazing events, man. Fucking... Highland Flames, dude, got the I, your boy rocking the the thistle. Like, that's how dang yeah, ugly dude. this, I, this I, trip I to Scotland was. Like, I'm I'm really taking my time with that one. We have a Champs 25th anniversary special coming up that just like has a billion amazing uh, clips. It's like the ultimate ADD special. It's just clip on clip Good on clip hell. on clip on clip. Like, I could have been sharing reels for the past year, you know, with all this stuff I've been editing. Um, 
So we're full steam ahead. I don't want to commit to next week, but let yo, let's do it the week after. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So I'm saying a couple if you're weeks. Down, yeah, yeah. If you're down, yeah, yeah. If you're down, I'm down, cover. buddy. I love it. I'm um, here for it, buddy. Thank you. I homie. love this. I love the community. Love you too, it's, man. Uh, you're the shit. Time. Hell yeah. Something I did want to dote on right here at the very end for you guys yeah. that are still watching the twenty of y'all. Um, with the, the hard, with the hard times situation that, you know, the industry is seeing, you know, that's just the artistic side, the scientific side and the manufacturing yep. side, they're actually experiencing a huge age gap between the new guys and the old school cats that are trying to catch up and teach everybody before, you know, they retire or go on to do other things. So if you have interest in glass and making a career in glass and, you know, it may not be the, the best time for you artistically, find a local scientific lab. Look up the ASGS. Uh, check out your community colleges. Look up the big colleges for glass. They're, uh, they're coming up with new glass scholarships trying to garner interest in it. Um, the ASGS themselves, they are uh, – more adamant about adding more artistic people into their scientific community. So now's a great time to bridge the gap between art and science and use the downtime, as we could say, to kind of brush up on some professional skills. So, I mean, that's just a suggestion. Definitely look into the ASGS and your scientific friends. Look into them because yeah. they're probably cooking money right now, dude. You know, because uh, there's – there's less of them and more demand now than ever. So look into that. And uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a wonderful week. And Mike, thanks for having me. Thank you My so buddy. much for having me, man. Much love, man. It's so great to uh, have you, man. You were a great uh, addition to this show. Let's do it again. Yes, sir. My boy. Four. Much love. Hell yeah. Good all right, night, buddy. Thanks for joining us, Torch Talk. Good night, Neverland. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'll just say, um, if uh, I know uh, Denver area is, like, one of the top analytical kind of spots for our thing. Um, I'm not making any promises or whatever, but I can tell you one spot, Precision Glassworks. They were just recently looking to hire, and... They're willing to train you, you know, to make this gap. So if you yeah, already that's, have that's this, right? Like if you already have this familiarity with it, and it's just what I was talking about in the beginning. Um, don't be afraid of new opportunities, homies. Like, I love what 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 we get to do. It it. You know, it, it it doesn't have to be a job for every one of us. And um, I since, like, I, it's not just about my personal experience. I just, I sincerely believe that if some of y'all can just hear me on this notion that, like, I know, I, it, I know it feels like an L. Am I wrong? It feels like an L when you built your life around something and then you got to all of a sudden maybe totally change that shit up. Like, it, it, I get it. I sincerely get it. But, like, I just want to say, like, the universe is cold and hard and, and brutal sometimes. But it can also <laughs> be... It can also be. <laughs> that was so, ice cold, Mike. I know. I'm Brutal. just like I. I feel like I'm lying to the homies, but like no, I. I sincerely, if you open yourself up to new opportunities, amazing things can happen. You know, and it's like that old silly saying. You know, one door closes, and another opens. Like I don't know, man. Like, if you put yourself into something and truly, like, treat that shit right and give it love, like, new things can happen that you you cannot imagine right now. You, like, that, and that's where no I'm getting at. Like, just, like, don't be afraid to leave this 
beautiful feral life behind. I know, I get it. It's like an L. It's like expensive like, money. I wake it's all, up it's all and expensive now. right. I get it. It's like I wake up and do exactly what I want when I want. All that. That's a hard fucking thing to let go. But when you start getting those fat fucking checks and your bills are all fucking paid and every one of those hours is like free to you to do all the amazing things you always loved. I don't know, man. I, I just and I know. Gla- glass pays. Shit. I, I think yeah. I've heard guys making 30, 40 bucks an hour and they teach you in house usually. Yeah. I mean, that. I mean, if you can still work with glass, that's ideal. But I'm just telling you, dogs, if you find, like, a cool opening at a restaurant you like, or if you find, I mean, yeah. God forbid, some cool extraction lab or anything. Try any, tie-dye, guys. Like, 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 find something that interests yourself and, like, throw yourself at it. And, like, find, find a, a new thing and be open to the possibility that it can be just as fulfilling as glass. I know that's like a like a harsh like I, I like I said when I started this shit I'm like I'm like Zelensky at the front lines man like this is just tough right now we all got to keep fighting <laughs> I'm gonna go try and get all this money from I just play it but like um sincerely I I just want to say homies just be open to pos- alternate possibilities. You know, this glass business, maybe it wasn't always big enough for, you know, 20 billion people who love degenerate art. I get it. But... That was a sick movie, though. It, it, just, it doesn't mean to say that, like, your life could not be shockingly awesome and fulfilling. Like, if something comes along, like, don't be afraid to throw yourself at it. And, I don't know, I'm, I feel like I'm ending on such a negative note about glass... It's just I know this is a oh. tough time, and and like, you should ask everybody to like the video and subscribe if they haven't like, already. Like and subscribe, <laughs> and I'll tell you more like about how guys. your dream is ending. I don't. It's know. not ending. It's not ending. There'll be a bounce back. There'll be a correction. Things this, will change, and yeah, life is good. We're just in a transitional moment things. here. Just don't be afraid to take whatever opportunities come and recognize that. What things look like on paper are often not that. You know, if you bring a positive attitude and, yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah. It's Keep it up, guys. <laughs> We're all Keep right, it up. But I'm sincerely, <laughs> homies. Just Thanks for joining us. Yeah, fight the good fight and um, don't be afraid. That's, that's all I'm saying, man. Like, don't be afraid to, like, take on some new thing. Like... Life can show you doors that you just did not see coming when you take it in different directions. And that's all I really want to end this on. Kai, thank you so much for joining us. This, this was peak, peak shit. I, I'm so happy that Hendy joined us again. Shout outs to him. That was the icing. The man. This was fucking awesome i really appreciate you guys out there and i i want to keep doing this and making it a positive thing for us fucking invite a friend for for the next like like ne- not next tuesday but the tuesday after that i think we'll we'll do it again one two way weeks, or another guys. <laughs> yeah two weeks i'm gonna get on his shit and be like yo bitch we yeah, gotta do we're, this we're doing this it's so, all right oh. much love homies Kyle, i'm gonna uh let you give them the the proper good night. Homies, I appreciate you so much. This is oh, it's man. dank to be here together. I want to keep doing it. I don't give a fuck what happens in this business. The glass is beautiful. What we do is beautiful. Let's keep fucking being beautiful together. And so, uh, and a proper good night is uh thanks for joining us. I'm out. <laughs> you're, you're out. Go to sleep. I got to wake up at 4 a.m. I love you all. Night, dogs. Bye. Peace. <laughs>